The following is a special presentation on TNN, the Nashville Network. Last week in Daytona, the final lap kind of summed up the whole first half of the season so far. The seven-time champion versus the young upstart. In the end, the youngster won this battle. But will he win the season-long war? Is this the year that youth overcomes experience? Here's Randy Pemberton. Well, the youngster is starting deep in the pack today. He's sandwiched in the middle of Sterling Marlin and Dale Earnhardt in the Winston Cup point standings. Hottest guy on the circuit still, though. 33% of the laps he's led, or 33, 35% of the miles, Jeff. But you're starting way back after winning seven poles. You're 21st today. What happened in qualifying? Well, I was just uh, trying to take a, about a fifth qualifying car to uh, the pole. And, you know, I took it on the edge like I do every weekend and uh, got a little bit too far over the edge, got a little loose, and uh, got the right rear end of the wall. And, you know, we, uh, we had to work real hard, but that just shows how tough this team is. They bounced back. We came back yesterday, had a good run. Uh, we were fastest yesterday, starting 21st here. But, uh, you know, it's 300 laps, but that's a long time around this place. So hopefully we can get up to the front. Okay, no doubt about it. All eyes will be on him as he marches toward the front today. Glenn Jarrett. Well, thanks, Randy. If youth is Jeff Gordon, which it is, then experience is this man, Dale Earnhardt. And this guy has won seven crowns. I don't think that he's quite ready to give it up yet. Those young guys have been running good, but you've still got a lot of racing left in you. Well, we hope we have. Uh, I feel like we got several more years anyway, Glenn. Uh, you know, it's real competitive. Uh, and, uh, you know, a guy with a talent like Gordon comes in here with the good equipment, and he, he can win races. But uh, still, we, we, we uh, feel like we can win some more championships, some more races ourselves, and uh, we're looking forward to the future. Not ready to start our own team, like you said this morning on TV on uh, race day, but... We're going we're gonna to look down the road to maybe only one someday when I really retire 10 or so years. Well, the report that I made on race day this morning has been emphatically and categorically denied by both Richard Childress and Dale Earnhardt. I stand corrected. I hang my head in humble apology. Is that good enough? <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, the plights of both Gordon and Earnhardt this year have only been two of the major stories in a year that's been chock full of interesting developments. What a season of headlines so far. Controversy, dominance, parody among car makes, new faces in victory lane. Fierce battles on and off the track. But as we head into the second half of 95 with ratings and attendance records, this season's been a knockout. Motorsports presents live coverage of the Slick 50 300 from the Magic Mile of Loudoun, New Hampshire. And it is jam-packed with race fans. They've been arriving here since Thursday. They sat through rain yesterday, but today the temperature is in the mid-70s and the humidity is some 30 points cooler than it was, or rather lower than it was yesterday afternoon. Welcome to the Granite State, everybody. I'm Mike Joy. This racetrack, since they began holding Winston Cup racing on this one-mile flat oval, has always favored the driver who could best adjust on his car throughout the day and take advantage of increasingly slick track conditions. Well, the top of the Winston Cup standings, that's increasingly slick as well. Three drivers are an unprecedented just 16 points apart here at the midpoint of the season, as we see in our Texaco Haviland point standings. So, what to expect from this, the midpoint race in the season? To my colleagues, Buddy Baker and Ernie Irvin. Buddy, what kind of race do you look for today? Three wide down the front straightaway, <laughs> double wide in the corners. There's a new sealer on the bottom side of the racetrack, but it does not bother the competition. Great racing all day. Ernie, the drivers did not get a last practice session yesterday. Was there a lot of guesswork in the garage this morning? Well, there was a lot of guesswork, but um, they did have a practice right before it started raining uh, yesterday afternoon. and. Um, you know, there was about 15 or 20 cars that could run the same speed. I think that it's going to be the most competitive race we've ever seen here at New Hampshire. Well, it's certainly the most competitive point battle. Let's go down to the point leader and Randy Pemberton. 
Well, Sterling Marlin will sit 31st on this grid today. He has two Winston Cup victories. The best average finisher of the Winston Cup season so far with an 8-3-3. Sterling, you're deep in the field. We've already talked about this track changing a lot during the day. Are you guys ready for that, and can you get to the front? Well, we changed a bunch on it this morning, and uh, you know, a lot of cars did what in the last practice, and uh, we're just going to go give it the best shot and see what happens. We've got some adjustments uh, uh, we can make and uh, whatever we have to do, so we should be in pretty good shape, I think. Okay, good luck, Sterling. Well, Sterling Marlin got to come from deep in the pack, but he has a lot of company back here. Dale Earnhardt and Rusty Wallace starting just inside the top 20. Well, we'll be back with live coverage from the Slick 5300 right after this. Today's exclusive coverage of the Slick 5300 on TNN is brought to you by Ford. At your Ford dealer, have you driven a Ford lately? By cold-filtered Miller Genuine Draft, making the world a very cool place. By Texaco, clean System 3 gasolines. Add more life to your car. Take it to the star. And by the more than 1,000 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. You see a heavy cloud cover over New Hampshire International Speedway. It'll keep it cool on these thousands of fans. 22 acres of new parking uh, Bob Bear added for this weekend. It is all full, and these grandstands are all packed. Here's the AutoZone race analysis brought to you by the more than 1,000 AutoZone stores across America. 41 cars in today's field for the 300-mile, or rather 300-lap, 300 317-mile distance. Rusty Wallace is the race record holder, set two years ago. Pit strategy as they roll off the starting grid. Here's Glenn. Well, Mike, the cars are just now rolling away, and the strategy so far, everybody, is, as you guys said earlier on, was a little bit concerned about what to do to their cars. Everybody, that is, except Mark Martin, they were fast right from the get-go, made very few changes on the cars. We can look for about 85 to 100 laps on fuel, and they also say that the tires will last that long, too. So, Really, the fuel stop and the uh, and the uh, tire window should be about the same today. Depends on how the uh, the things shake out. It'll be a little skitterish starting out. The cars will skate a little bit because of the soft rubber that was left down from the modified in the Bush North race uh, yesterday, which finished up last night. So look for the guys to sort things out a little bit early on. But nobody really made a lot of major chassis adjustments or changes that I talked to. By the way, this is the same tire that the car the Bush cars ran last week at Milwaukee. Similar type racing surface. So. I really look for Dale Jerry to have a good day. They've got the same type setup under their car. A lot of good guys on flat tracks here today. This is going to be a heck of a show, Mike. Thanks, Glenn. Let's have a look at the starting lineup. Mark Martin, new track record. His Valvoline Ford is on the pole. Robert Presley in the Skull Chevrolet, his best qualifying effort outside row one. Row number two, Joe Nemechek also has his best start of the season. And Bill Elliott has his first top five start of the year. Bobby Labonte. The winner at Charlotte and Michigan in row three. And Rick Mass, second top ten start for Rick this year. Ricky Rudd is the defending champion of this race. And Kyle Petty, who won at Dover last month, that's row four. Michael Walter, eighth in the points. And Ken Schrader in row five. Row six, Morgan Shepard, sixth here last year. And Dick Trickle had a strong run in Daytona last week. Row seven, Terry Labonte, the winner in Richmond and Pocono. And Dale Jarrett. Runner number eight, Jeremy Mayfield, and Hutt Strickland, who has three top tens in the last five races since joining Kenny Bernstein's team. Ted Musgrave, fourth in the point standings, and last year's runner-up here, Dale Earnhardt. Ricky Craven won yesterday's Bush North race, and Rusty Wallace, who won the first Slick 50, 300 here. Jeff Gordon, fastest second-round qualifier, and Jeff Bodine. Derek Cope for his first win since 1990, and Dave Marcus starts his 776 Winston Cup race next, uh, today. Elton Sawyer in the Junior Johnson Ford, and Bobby Hamilton has five top tens this year. Ward Burton and Todd Bodine, who was fifth year last season. John Andretti and Jeff Burton, who made his Cup debut two years ago here. Sterling Marlin, the point leader, is deep in the field, and Darrell Waltrip. Rich Bickle, with the Dick Brooks Felix Sabates team and Steve Grissom, who had a fifth at Wilkesboro this year. Mike Wallace makes his second New Hampshire start. Blake Speed, who was eighth in Charlotte. Bobby Hillen Jr. and Jimmy Hensley makes his second start for Bill Davis. Brett Bodine qualifying troubles. We'll put you in on that later on. And Jimmy Spencer looks for his first win since almost a year ago. And Chuck Bound, twice a runner up here in Bush Series competition. 
Chevrolet Corvette pace car leads them around. And they have been running a lap at the pit road speed since they didn't get to do so yesterday afternoon. In the middle of one and two, they say the lead is. Riding with Sterling Marlin and uh, telling him about a piece of debris out on the racetrack in turn number two. You saw the uh, track truck there to go pick it up. There's the roof cam. I don't see the Morgan it. McClure Kodak Chevrolet. And out the rear window, Sterling Marlin's car. And out the right side window as well, looking across at Darrell Waltrip. We'll be on the pole with Mark Martin in the Valvoline Cummins Diesel Ford of Jack Roush. Both inside and up top on the roof cam. And out the right side window of Mark's car as well. And Dave Marcus, the Olive Garden Prodigy Computer Service Chevrolet, starting 24th today. Dave told me this morning he will not have Ward Burton in his car next year, as, as Glenn was also emphatically told. He intends to drive it himself next season once again. So we'll give you a ride. We'll also be able to talk to Dave Marcus today. Thanks to our uh, racing electronics and car radios. Mike, you see how fast they're running under the caution here. What they're doing is seating in the brakes. They didn't have time yesterday to run the brakes in, so they're running a little bit faster than normal going down the back straightaway. You can see they're running about 100 miles an hour, seating the brakes in for the start of the race. We'll have another new view to show you today. We'll be up on the roof to the right of our broadcast position. You are looking from the hat of Buddy Red Dog Barnes. He is the spotter from John and uh, for John Andretti. The uh, Kmart Little Caesars Pranifus Haas Ford, number 37, and you'll see what he is looking at as he gives instruction to John. And you'll be able to hear those instructions as John Andretti there moves around the speedway. There's Andretti's Ford, and Buddy Barnes checking things out. Don't look at those grandstands, Buddy. Oh, that's a nice grandstand. <laughs> uh, by the way, congratulations to Ernie Irvin. He's up here with us today in the booth. He went to uh, Bristol and helped set up his truck, and uh, they won their first race there in Bristol with uh, Joe Rutman driving. And uh, thanks to Ernie, they had a super ride there. I tell you, you know, thanks to Joe. He really uh, drove the wheels off that thing. And, um, you know, it was, a, it was a lot of fun. It's a, I've been to Victor Lane before at Bristol, and uh, this was uh, special, too. Well, silly season begins the second half of the season. 22 Fords, 14 Chevys, 5 Pontiacs. There will not be that sixth Pontiac in Winston Cup racing. At least it won't be out of the Ricky Rudd stable. He announced this weekend that he had talked to the folks in Pontiac, but Rudd's tied team will stay with Ford next year. That puts one rumor to rest. Gosh, there are a lot of them flying about what will happen next year to drivers, car owners, crew chiefs, lots of folks in this sport. There's Jack Roush, who owns the pole-sitting car of Mark Martin and the fourth-place point-standing car of Ted Musgrave. Yesterday, Jack was dripped to a T-shirt and shorts inside of Mark's truck, putting together a cylinder head for Ted Musgrave's car. But he had that hat on, I guarantee it. <laughs> I think he takes a shower with that thing on. We're going flat track in here in New Hampshire. The banking is only 12 degrees at its highest point, 1,500-foot straightaways on this one-mile oval built from the old 1.6-mile Briar Motorsports Park now plays host to Winston Cup, the Bush Series, the Featherlight Modified Tour, Indy Cars, the Loudon Classic for Motorcycle, and SCCA Amateur Events. Go-karts, you name it. Everybody races here at the Magic Mile. Boy, the hearts are pumping right now. This is probably the most intriguing part of the race is when you're waiting on that green flag to fly. Coming down there, every once in a while, your kneecap will jump a little bit. You really get ready for the start. Mark Martin's Ford, Robert Presley's Chevrolet on the front row. And we are under green at New Hampshire for the Slick 5300. Well, Mark got a nice jump to see Robert Presley, though, on the outside. That's a great part of this racetrack. You can race fast on the outer groove there. Tip going out of turn number two. Presley has Nemechek to the inside. And Joe won a Bush race here. Stole it from Dale Earnhardt on the last lap. The fourth car in the picture there, that's Bobby Labonte. He was one of the fastest cars in morning practice yesterday. You see Nemechek's car just a little bit loose coming out of turn four. First with the cup race, Mark Martin has led since Charlotte in May. There's Presley in 33, 87 is Nemechek, 18. Labonte whoa. and whoa, Nemechek almost tossed the bun away with a burger there. I think I'm gonna throw that right. loose condition, little loose, that's a bunch loose right there. Yeah, I tell you, it looked like um, the, the car in front of him had actually got a little bit loose and uh, slowed down, and Imachek was ma making sure he didn't hit him. 
Here comes Ricky Rudd in trouble in turn three. Dave Marcus has spun around. Dale Jarrett is in the fence. That's, that's amazing. Good job, good job. Wow, wow, how many times has that happened to him this year, right at the first of a race? Well, every TNN race. Dover, Pocono, here. Wow. He finished the Winston Select. We'll have to check. The nice part is it does not look like a lot of damage. And, um, you know, I see her happening, but you know how those deals go. Uh, I headed for the grass, but somebody got me. That's Dave Marcus you're listening to as we're on board the Olive Garden Chevrolet. Here's what happened. Lake Speed is right behind him. Looks like he got into the left rear corner just a little bit. You see Dale Jarrett running backwards up towards the wall. Buddy, I believe that was Jeff Bodine rather than Lake Speed. There's Lake uh, Speed moving I, through. I think it was um, Lake Speed that actually bumped into him. We'll double check when we come back. We'll look again. It is three laps on the scoreboard here at Loudon, New Hampshire. Dale Jarrett and Dave Marcus are both able to continue. Welcome back to Loudon, New Hampshire, the Slick 5300. NASCAR may open the penalty box. Let's show you what happened here at turn three once again. Watch well, that, the 28 car. Mike, after watching this, you were correct. It's Jeff Bodine. You can see him coming on the inside there. Rusty Wallace right on the outside. He gets into the 28 car just as they enter into the corner. Around goes Dale Jarrett. Bodine goes under. Nice move by Rusty Wallace, but Elk, Dave Marcus. He got collected a little yep. bit by Elton Sawyer there. Now, from Dave Marcus's car. Oof. Pretty close. We're about to go back to green. Here's Randy Pemberton. Well, the 28 car has suffered a lot of damage. Uh, they have a toe-in problem or possibly toe-out. Dale has tried to work the wheel out there a little bit, get it fixed. Uh, it won't happen this uh, caution. They've strung the car. Uh, they can't get the toe-in fixed. Uh, they're going back to green. Uh, right now, uh, Dale Jarrett's just going to have to ride it out until the next yellow. Glenn Jarrett, green flag. Well, guys, that car has got a lot of history behind it. That's the same car Davey Allison drove to his last victory ever, and it's the car that Ernie Irvin set on the pole, set the track record with here last year. Good race car. Jeff Bodine has come down pit road. Where Jimmy Cox has the stop sign out, and he is holding the Exide Batteries board. We're back under green. And look at this pack. Looks like Daytona all over again with Ricky Craven in amongst Dale Earnhardt and Jeff Gordon. Jeff Bodine will spend one lap in the penalty box as the field comes past. You see Robert Presley in a 33 car. He's beginning to drop back just a little bit from the leaders. Looks like he's got a handling problem a little bit. You see the back end down trap there as he turns into the corner. Back to green after an early caution involving Dale Jarrett and Jeff Bodine. Ricky Rudd right on the tail of Robert Presley as Hut Strickland moves to the outside of Jeff Gordon and Ted Musgrave. Now there's a car that does not have a problem. No, he sir. passed two cars in one corner on the outside. That's pretty strong. Strickland and Musgrave, the fourth place point man, side by side. Back into the corner. Jeremy Mayfield and Dick Trickle just ahead. Think things will settle down for a few laps here? Oh, well, I hope so. Uh, get a few laps under green here and kind of sort things out. You see Bodine under Dick Trickle there, too wide coming off the corner there, and that's Ted Musgraves on the inside. Folks, if you have questions during our telecast, we'd love to hear them. 1-800-451-7331 is our toll-free number. Operators in Nashville will fax your questions to us here in the booth, and we'll try to get you some answers as this telecast goes along. If you have a question about the race, dial in toll-free all during our telecast, 1-800-451-7331. You know, it looks like Ricky Craven may have learned a little bit about the racetrack yesterday. He won the uh, 150 here at Bush Grand National North, and he's working over Hut Strickland right there at the back of the frame there. And Rusty Wallace moving in. And Ward Burton. You know, I, I think a lot of people don't really know that they actually repaved this racetrack since last year. And um, they've had a couple races on it. And 
you know, last year, remember the racetrack kept coming up and, you know, it was um, real slick and stuff. And then now they've put a sealer on it before we come this weekend. So nobody had actually run on it with the sealer and uh, no testing had been done or anything. 17 cautions last year. They got a beautiful racing surface here yesterday in 90 degree heat. They had sprinklers out, watered the whole surface for a bit. That was on Friday. And then of course yesterday it rained. So should be in good shape for today. We'll be right back. Today's exclusive coverage of the Slick 5300 on TNN is brought to you by Napa. We keep America running. 14 laps, Mark Martin leading Bobby Labonte, Joe Nemechek, Ricky Rudd in fourth, Robert Presley in fifth, Kyle Petty is sixth, Bill Elliott seventh, Rick Mast is eighth, Kenny Schrader ninth, Morgan Shepard tenth, then Terry Labonte, Michael Waltrip, Jeff Gordon, Dale Earnhardt, and Derek Cope. Didn't take long, did it, to see who the handling cars are and who the non-handling cars are. Yeah, we, we all were uh, talking about that before the show, and, um, you know, there's a lot of cars that were the same in practice, and, uh, you know, now we see uh, Jeff Gordon, and we see uh, Terry Labonte, Morgan Shepard, Kenny Schrader. You know, they're all, they all, everybody looks like they're handling good, but now we're going to see what's going to happen in the next 20 laps. That's the battle for ninth place. That you're watching, Kenny Schrader in ninth, Morgan Shepard, number 21 in 10th, Labonte, the number seven of Bodine, is one lap down. You see, uh, at the back of this train right here, Jeff Gordon and, and uh, Dale Earnhardt, they're moving up. They're just not in as big a hurry as we're used to seeing them come up through the crowd because this racetrack is a give-and-take racetrack. You jump in there and, and hook somebody, you cause a huge wreck. This group is four and a half seconds behind the race leader. I think this place right here, the track position is going to be so, so important. You know, pit stops are going to be unbelievable important. And, um, you know, this race is, has always had that type of deal. But, you know, right now the cars are so much equal. I think that now track position is going to be even more. I think we're going to see some two-tire stops. Um, obviously, Ricky Rudd won the race last year doing a two-tire stop. But... I really think that um, the tires are, you know, keeping their speed for a long time. So we're going to see some two-tire stops and pit stops are going to be critical. This is Kenny Schrader leading this bunch. You see Morgan Shepard looking into the inside there. I believe his car is a little bit quicker than Kenny's in the corner, but he can't get the move on him because Kenny's car is extremely strong down the straightaway. Let's recount that of the cars involved in that incident, Dale Jarrett is still on the lead lap but is fading. Dave Marcus is back in and amongst the fray. And here comes Earnhardt and Gordon. This would be back at 13th position. That's Derek Cope in the 12 car there. He's run this group down and moved right up in the fray. Now Earnhardt's actually passed Gordon because Gordon was in front of him for a while. Now Earnhardt's passed him and uh, it looks like Earnhardt's pulling away from Gordon. 13th place. Pulling down on the Pennzoil Pontiac and Mike Waltrip. See Jeff Gordon's car kind of hook a little bit there coming out of the corner. The back end jumped out just a little bit. He did lose a lap a while ago when they brought him in for that stop and go penalty. Oh, buddy, they, excuse me, they held him a lap. They held him until the leader went by. It was a, it was a full one lap penalty box. Same difference. Field. One lap down, I guarantee you he's fuming right now. So now here's Earnhardt looking inside Michael Waltrip. Also looks like, right there. Look Michael like giving some Shepard. room there. You see Michael Walter move out. Right? He knows Earnhardt when he gets his nose up under there. He's going to go somewhere. And Terry Labonte goes after Schrader. Makes the pass. With Shepard now moving up into ninth place in that pack. Schrader and Earnhardt. That's two hard heads going there, boy. They'll race themselves to death. And they love to race each other. Trader might be off just a little bit. Ernie, it looks like the outside groove is going away quite a bit because uh, the minute the trader got to the outside, he lost about seven or eight positions. Yeah, I don't really think there was much of an outside groove anyway. You know, um, there has never been anybody running up on the outside and running fast. That's going to come in later today, I think. So there's Schrader. Just outside the top 10 now. 
22 laps complete. Mark Martin leads Bobby Labonte, Joe Nemechek, Robert Presley, and Ricky Rudd, the top five. We'll be right back. 27 laps complete here at Loudon, New Hampshire. Here's a look at your top 10 in the Slick 5300. Down through Terry Labonte in 10th place and down through Dick Trickle running in 20th. Bobby Labonte had been right on Mark Martin's bumper until the last time they went into turn number one where Mark opened up about three car lengths on Bobby whose car pushed up to the high group between one and two. Mike, a, a lot of times when you go in the corner, Ernie can verify this, you go in so hard that the car will not stick and it goes right on out to the outside and you can see the outside groove is not the place to be right now, so he lost quite a bit of ground there. I tell you, you know, they, they put a sealer on this racetrack yesterday or, or a couple, three days ago, and you know, everybody started running. Well, nobody really ran the high groove. So obviously more of the sealer that gets wore off on the bottom groove, bottom groove gets faster. Top groove doesn't have the sealer wore off yet. Now they have just overlapped Dale Jarrett, whose car was involved in that initial lap spin. There you see the right rear of Jarrett's car, the spoiler and deck lid pushed up, the bumper a bit askew. Other than that, Randy Pemberton, what's wrong with Dale Jarrett's car? Well, I can tell you it's a somber bunch down here in the 28. The 28 crew is uh, Larry McReynolds. We know you had some damage. What is it, and can you fix it? Well, I think we can, Randy. We're going to have to have a caution to fix it. It sure would have been nice to have got one before the leaders got back to us. The right front wheel's towed out about three inches. Again, we can fix it, I think, but we need a caution to do it. Okay, that's the report from Larry McReynolds. Jared, after the spin, backed into the wall, and that may have come around and caught up with the right front as well. Watch that eight car tail into that pack. See a little bit of smoke coming out the back of Jay, uh, Jeff Burton's Ray Bestus Ford. As he goes into the corner, dissipates when he comes off the corner behind Hutt Strickland, Dick Trickle, and Jerry Mayfield. Now there's a touch of it there, just coming up from under. Well, Mike, if it don't get any worse than that, but the bad part is it's so early in the race to have any kind of leak that eventually you're going to use up whatever that is that's smoking. We, we don't speculate up here because we certainly don't know. I tell you, that, that race team right there has really had a tough time this year. I was talking to somebody uh, this morning, and um, they haven't been in the top. They, they've only ran in the top 18 one time. I mean, so they've had a, a tough go of it. Burton's crew thinks it's a valve cover leaking, valve cover gasket. Well, you see everybody lapping over Dale Jarrett there. When the, when the front tire is towed out three inches like that, that's just like dragging the whole car down the straightaway. It just won't come up to speed, and I know he's wishing for caution right now. Gordon Shepard goes past, so Jarrett joins Jeff Bodine and being one lap down. 33 of 300 laps complete. Just two cars off the lead lap. See Morgan Shepard there. He's chasing Earnhardt through the corner. He looks like he's running quite well today. He said he was this morning when I talked to him. Morgan Shepard said he was really getting through the corner good. And as you know, this racetrack is all corner. I mean, that's where you really set up to get the straightaway speed that makes the ground. Mike Wallace and the Heilig Myers Ford, whose name has been mentioned with several top rides for next season. Now driving for Junie Don Levy, and he'll go a lap down to Mark Martin. You know, rumors are funny. This man owns part of this race team. Junie Don Levy gave him part of that race team. I'm not sure he's going anywhere. I'm not either. But you hear some strange things this time of year. You definitely. Jeremy Mayfield caught on the outside in the RCA Ford of Cale Yarborough and those other three Fords. Great train by him. Now Ricky Craven. When a Chevrolet drops to the inside, he's not going to get there this time. Oh, we have one in the wall, the 22 car, oh. Jimmy Hensley. That's the Bill Davis MBNA Pontiac bringing out the second caution flag of the day. Right between turns one and two. See Jimmy coming out. He's got his uh, window net down. He's getting out of the car right now. trying to get everything unhooked. When you start getting out and all those radio connections and everything, you have to get all that unhooked before you can jump out. Hensley, two races ago, replaced rookie Randy LaJoy in the Bill Davis Pontiac. And he's had a 
pretty hard lick into the wall. Gets out under his own power and waits for attention. Must Let's see pit stops here. Must have cut a tire down or something. It sure seems like. Huh? You know, now, yeah, again, um, remember, pit stops are going to be really critical right now. And, uh, you know, the, the fastest pitchers are the ones that are going to, you know, uh, benefit from this. And as we've said, track position is so critical. The quickest crews. A lot easier to pass somebody when they're stopped on pit road than yeah. out there on the racetrack. Yeah, that's for sure. Jimmy's still sitting there. Well, he's okay. Looks like he just had a little bit of the wind knocked out of him. And we, we look like we got pit stops coming. It looks like everybody's going to come. Mark Martin leads the fleet down pit road. Mike Wallace and Jeff Bodine stay out. As they are not on the lead lap, they cannot pit this time. I bet you we'll see some two-tire stops. Um, you know, obviously they're all pitting, so we're not going to be able to spot them off. Here's Glenn. Mark Martin comes in. He's been talking with Steve Mill about a slight chassis adjustment. They're only talking about maybe a pound of air added to the right rear. So evidently the car might be just a little bit too tight for Mark. But uh, other than that, I see no signs of any chassis adjustment. So anything they did, they did with air pressure. Randy? Well, Jeff Gordon went for a two-tire stop. He's down and away. Rusty Wallace is out. The 28 car is in. They're working on the rear end and the front end of Dale Jarrett's car. He's in for a lengthy stay. He'll probably just beat the pace car out. Here's how they came off pit road. Mark, or rather Jeff Gordon out first. Mark Martin out second. Bobby Labonte. Then Robert Presley, Joe Nemechek, Ricky Rudd, Terry Labonte, Morgan Shepard, and Rusty Wallace. We'll be right back to Loudoun, New Hampshire after this. Today's exclusive coverage of the Slick 5300 on TNN is brought to you by RCA, Changing Entertainment, again. A slip of the grip and bad luck for Bobby Labonte. They had a great pit stop. They got Bobby back out in third place, but they left a wrench in the car, the one they used to adjust the jacking bolt. Look at the top of the left rear of the rear window, and there is that ratchet and the extension that turns that jacking screw. The mechanic takes it off, tosses it over the wall, and Bobby Labonte will restart tail end. Wow. Here's Glenn. Well, you're looking at the wrench here. So Jimmy Maycar is talking to his driver, Bobby Labonte. Of course, Jimmy is the crew chief on the car. We'll let them finish their conversation, and we'll get a word with him to see just exactly what they're going to do to... Jimmy, awfully tough break, but uh, nothing you can do now but take your time getting back. No, it wasn't that. It was kind of a miscommunication here in the pits. We, we made a tire pressure change, and one of the guys thought we meant rounds and put the wedge wrench in the car to, to make the round change, and nobody made a change. So. I saw you talking to Bobby there. Are you trying to calm him down or just tell him to take it easy? No, he's okay. We'll just kind of go over what we got to do start at the back. Kind of going to be a little tough now. We'll have to be calm and take our time, get to the front, but kind of be cautiously aggressive. So we got a lot of time left in the race. I think we'll be okay. We just have to stay out of trouble. Awfully smart thinking there. They got an awfully good race car today. They do, Glenn, but as you look at the top ten, buddy, two drivers that I've never known anybody had to calm down, the Labonte brothers. <laughs> They're pretty cool. They are cool customers. The 28 car pitted with the cars on the lead lap, so he must restart at the tail end of the longest line, and that line is 38 cars long. Cars on the lead lap. Jeff Gordon has now led 15 of the 16 races this year, has 110 bonus points. You get five points if you lead a lap during the race, and the driver who leads the most laps gets an additional five points. We'll try to give you those stats uh, in response to one of our 800 calls if we have it at the end of the day. We're ready to go back to green. Lap 41 and green flag flying. Jeff Gordon hauls him down to turn one. That's Jeff Bodine, number seven, trying to get back on the lead lap as Mark Martin carries you into turn one. Bodine got a good run up off the corner, got right to Gordon's bumper and no further. Uh, it's not quite over yet. He's looking on the inside. Whoa. He, he makes the move going into turn three there. A bold move by Jeff Bodine. Whoa. Here comes Mark Martin trying to take the lead. Almost took our in-car camera right there as he got up against Jeff Gordon. Yeah, Jeff uh, got tagged just a little bit there, but Mark was already up under him. It was not meant to happen like that. So Bodine is back on the lead lap, and Martin is back in the lead. Glenn? 
Well, Mike, one of the reasons that Jeff Gordon decided to take on only two tires while the rest of the guys took four was track position. They wanted it very, very badly. They knew they could get up to the front of the pack and maybe not lose too many on the restart. Ray Everham told him, Jeff, it's going to be a little loose in the center of the corner. Just take it easy. We'll gain in the long run by doing this. Thanks, Vlad. Pretty much single file back through the field. See Huff Strickland and uh, Kyle Petty racing side by side. Huff's not able to make any positions on the outside there. He'll have to stay on the bottom until they work that groove up later on in the race. To underscore Glenn's point, Jeff Gordon came into the pits 12th on that caution flag and came out first. Ricky Craven and Todd Bodine and Ward Burton, the 31, the Hardy's car battle. See Ward Burton there taking a look running there with Strader on the inside of the racetrack. Now you can see that outside lane. He lost about three car lengths. Here comes Ward Burton making it three wide down the back straightaway as they go towards turn three. Schrader had to check up coming off turn two to keep from getting into Strickland and Ward Burton drives on past. Well, this is a give and take and I guarantee you if I'd have been in third lane, I'd have been given. <laughs> Second helping for Ward Burton. As he moves up now, Ricky Craven, the Kodiak Chevy, number 41 on the inside. Pulls underneath Hutt Strickland. Ooh, they bump, Whoa. they bang. And Strickland goes around in the fence gently. A long ride for the Quaker State Board of Hutt Strickland. Will he sit there to draw the caution? No, he pulls away. And he didn't hit it all that gently. No, that's pretty, you know, anytime you touch a concrete wall, it's backed up by the state of New Hampshire here. Yes. So when you pop it, it's going to bend some stuff. We stay under green. Well, Mark Martin's making this look pretty easy right now. That car's doing everything he wants, but you see, uh, everybody's not doing everything they can do right now. There's Jeff Bodine just in front of him. He's back in the lead lap now. And uh, he actually passed the, the lead car. Let's show you what happened to Hut Strickland. There's Ricky Craven, 41. Strickland is the other green car, 26. Okay, you see Ricky right on the bottom there. They just make contact getting into the corner. There was nowhere for Ricky to go. He had the left front as far down the next that yellow line as he could go. He lost about four positions. And Hut Strickland got into the fence and is now on pit road. Randy's right there. Well, Hutt's damage looks at least as bad as Dale Jarrett's. The truck buckled in underneath the rear tires. Hard to see if the frame is bent underneath. It might be okay, but they've lost now two laps. They've changed four tires. Hutt stalls the car, leaving pit road. They've got a little work to do on the next pit stop. He'll ride around so they can get her back in here. One of the few disappointments they've had since Strickland has joined that team. You know, that's, that's a lot like the wreck that they had at um, Michigan when, um, you know, Ricky Rudd kind of come down with him. You know. That's just part of racing, I guess. Rusty Wallace and Rick Mass battle. There's Bill Elliott with Ted Musgrave, Derek Cope, Dale Earnhardt, and the 30 car of Michael Waltrip. We'll be back to New Hampshire International Speedway after this. <laughs> 55 laps completed in the Slick 5300 here live in New Hampshire. Mark Martin in front of the field. Jeff Bodine there on the tail end of the lead lap in number seven show you another look at what happened from Sterling Marlin's car. And Marlin was one of four cars that went by Craven and Strickland. Marlin running 20th, Earnhardt 13th, Gordon is second. Those are the three point leaders. And look at the right side of your screen there, Robert Presley, just behind the two leaders. What a great run the rookie driver is having for Leo Jackson today. Let's go to his pick. Well, guys, one of the reasons that he may be doing so well so early is that Robert has had more experience on this racetrack than anybody else here. He ran all the Bush Series races. So, Charlie, is that a, is that a lot to do with it, the experience that Robert has here? I think it has a lot to do with it. Uh, he, he came here with a good setup. Guys back in the shop gave him a good car. Robert put a good setup on it. It's uh, looking pretty good right now. Well, it certainly is. Of course, this is Charlie Flair Presley, Robert's brother and crew chief. And next door to them is Joe Nemechek. Joe also has a lot of experience on this racetrack. It seems to be paying off early here for those young guys. That's right, fans. Remember that when Bob Bear built the Super Speedway, he ran Bush Grand National Racing for several years before NASCAR would grant him a Winston Cup date. So the drivers who ran those races may have an edge here today. 
Presley trails Ricky Craven by one point in the Rookie of the Year chase. John Andretti moving up on Sterling Marlin. There's Jimmy Spencer. He's on the move right now. He's up under Ricky Craven getting in that corner. He's just behind these cars that we're looking at. This Dick Trickle and uh, I noticed uh, a while ago that Sterling Marlin's car, when we had the in-car camera on it, he's running those headers again that everybody was talking about in Daytona. Now, Rudd Pittman said those were only for Daytona and Talladega. Yeah, but you know how mind. motors men are. You know, how are they? They'll tell you a fib. Rudd Pittman would not do that. Here's your Napa Field standing <laughs> update. Napa, we keep America running. Here's how they're running at 58 lines. We had an 800 call about gas mileage. We estimate about five miles per gallon for the Winston Cup cars. And I asked Rutt Pittman that one day at Daytona. I said, can you make it on fuel? And he says, heck, he says, this thing gets better gas mileage than my wife's station wagon. <laughs> yeah. Glad I don't drive her station wagon. Okay, we'll be taking spotter right now. Taylor is out, that's all we will get him. Now, that's the interplay between the 37 car of John Andretti and the four car of Sterling Marlin. A little uh, horse trading going on up here to our right on the roof. They're going to talk to the spotter for Dick Trickle for the 15 car. Try to work something out. There goes Andretti. Good to follow him. Boy, Andretti's running very well. He passed Sterling like he was stopped going in turn three over there. 20th place. And Jimmy Spencer. And the camel car just behind Marlins Kodak machine. 60 laps are complete here at the Magic Mile at Loudon, New Hampshire, and Mark Martin has been in front for most of them. We'll be right back with you live on TNN. Today's exclusive coverage of the Slick 5300 on TNN is brought to you by the more than 1,000 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. Sterling Marlins dropped a few spots from when we left. Jimmy Spencer just sliced underneath him, and so did Bobby Hamilton in the STP Pontiac just ahead. So Marlin continues to drop a few positions, not going to aid him in his quest to stay seven points ahead of Jeff Gordon and 16 ahead of Dale Earnhardt. He has slipped to 23rd. Now Jimmy Spencer continues to move forward, passing Dick Trickle. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> what oh, Buddy my. Baker was saying was... Please, clear, Dick Trickle, don't clear. pull down. <laughs> now you hear the spotters, they're saying clear, you know. Um, when, the, when the car goes by and um, the spotter sees that they're clear, they'll, they'll tell them clear. See Bobby Hamilton there, the car is right on the bottom of the racetrack. It's handling quite well. He and Spencer have really moved up in the past couple of laps. Ooh, look at Marlon pulled out on Bobby Hamilton getting into the corner. Once again, if you have questions for us, give us a call here at TNN. Questions about today's race, toll free, 1-800-451-7331. John from New York wants to know, what's the difference between the helmet these drivers wear and his motorcycle helmet? Well, that actually, um, the, the motorcycle helmet would be the, basically the same thing we would wear in a race car. Now, I don't know what his motorcycle helmet actually is, but we wear a Simpson helmet, most all the Winston Cup guys do. And, um, you know, they're usually, most of us all wear a full face Simpson helmet. My guess, John, the major differences are the D-rings are a little different shape for a cycle helmet. They've got flat sides instead of round ones. There's a fire retardant interior in the racing helmet. The racing helmet has a Snell Foundation sticker that it's been inspected and approved. Right. So that's the big difference. And the one thing I love the best is the fresh air duct in the side. Yes. I'm going to tell you, with the full face helmet, you have to have some air in there. I tell you, they, they've got some uh, words going around with Jimmy Spencer. He uh, really been loose off the corner a couple times, and I think he's uh, just about sideswiped the fence there a little bit, but he's really running good. Jimmy runs one way. Wide, wide open. open. No, yeah. no, no, it's two ways. Oh. Wide open, half turned over all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Excitement, they named him when he ran the Modifieds and won the national championship. Two races last year, Daytona and Talladega in July. Here's Bill Elliott running in 10th place in the McDonald's Ford, leading a pack that includes the Family Channel Ford of Ted Musgrave, oh. the, main, the main and tail Ford, almost losing part of that tail, was Derek Cope, and the man in black, the Goodrent Chevy, seven-time champion, Dale Earnhardt. 
You can see Dale got just about up where Derek Coates would know he's there, but not quite. And Dale had to check up a little bit, but he come right back across it on the front of the uh, three car. I tell you, you remember last year, you know, um, I led a lot of this race and actually had put Dale Earnhardt a lap down because he wasn't running all that well. And you can't ever count Dale Earnhardt no. out. He'll, he'll work on their car, they'll work on their car. Next thing you know, Dale Earnhardt gets his lap back. Um, pretty soon he's in the lead and racing for the win. Earnhardt didn't win that race. Ricky Rudd did. But to me, that was one of Earnhardt's most impressive drives of all last season to come. He lost a lap in, a, in less than 100 laps, maybe right. 60 laps. I think it was about 60 laps. I think, I think you're right. And then came back yep. and was a contender. Speaking of contenders, right there in the 16 car, Ted Musgrave, I don't know of anybody who's had a better year than he's had. He's so consistent. Don't count him out of the points race yet. He's in fourth, 110 points out of the lead. Trouble on Dick Trickle's car. The engine may have let go. A lot of smoke, smoke out of turn two. Trickle drops to the inside. Tough day for Bud Moore's team. Great run in Daytona. Got shuffled around on the restart there. I think he was running in seventh and got into the wall a little bit. And some cars helped him get over into it and uh, ended up back way back in the field there, but uh, they had a great run all day. You can see Jeff Gordon um, working on Mark Martin. Jeff Gordon only took two tires on, so that's going to tell all these guys in the in the pits that, um, you know, man, maybe we only maybe have to put two on. So next stop, the majority of the guys will probably put two on. Jeff Gordon's probably going to have to put four on. So um, where his advantage, he got back to the front this time. Now the advantage is going to going to be away from him a little bit. But now they know that a two-tire stop works, and it really right. doesn't hurt them badly. Right. Dick Trickle's car on pit road with the hood up. Bobby Labonte, who had that penalty, has gained only nine spots since the restart. And we'll be right back to Loudon, New Hampshire after this. Welcome back to Loudon, New Hampshire International Speedway. Mike Joy with Buddy Baker and Ernie Irvin. Randy Pemberton, Glenn Jarrett on pit road for TNN today. Mark Martin continues to hold sway. And remember the penalty to Bobby Labonte? He is only five seconds on the racetrack from going a lap down. That penalty really cost him track position, as we said at the top of the day, is everything here. Labonte came out of the pits third, had to stop to remove a, a jacking bolt wrench, had to restart 38. And now, may be in trouble because here come the leaders. Well, the same people he's trying to pass, though, the leaders have to go by now. The only thing they do have is the advantage of the flagman working with them to move the lap over cars out of the way. So uh, it's always an advantage to be on the lead lap. I tell you, Buddy Baker brought up a good point. If Jeff Bodine gets back in the lead lap, which he's on the lead lap now, but he's actually outrunning Mark Martin right now. So um, if he can get back, uh, get a caution, and uh, get to come back around, um, he's going to be a contender today. Chuck Bound about to be overlapped by the race leader. Mark Martin, very interesting sponsor on Bound's car underneath active race. I'm not sure we can get a shot of it, but I'll tell you about it. Now, here's Gordon underneath Bound. Gets it by. And there's Bound. David McCorriston of Bristol, Connecticut, was taking his girlfriend through the garage area today. An under active racing where it says, Connie, will you marry me, David? Connie Russo said yes. What a way to propose on the side of a Winston Cup stock car. Huh, that is neat. <laughs> so Connie and David, best of luck. Hope the marriage lasts longer than the sheet metal on most of these cars. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty neat deal. You see Steve Griffin going a lap down there. There's Mark Martin and... Uh, you see Jeff Gordon, he only changed two tires, but he may have had a handling problem that they figured if they just changed the right side, that it would really make the car better. So a lot of times you do that. Instead of taking on four tires, you take on the right side to maybe uh, loosen the car up just a little bit. Let's go back to the battle for fifth place for Robert Presley. He's trying to hold off Terry Labonte. Labonte seventh in the point standing at this halfway juncture. Presley battling Ricky Craven for Rookie of the Year. Presley started outside pole today. 
Well, Terry Labonte gets by him. It was due to uh, Robert Presley Proud just to follow this guy because he knows where that winter circle is. And here comes Rusty Wallace, who has come from 20th on the starting grid to sixth place today. Like I said, Rusty was one of the real good cars in practice. And you see Rusty's line through the, through the corner. I mean, he's going in real low, and he's coming all the way around the corner and right near the apron. Ernie, he's within a half car length to getting as low as you run here. <laughs> <laughs> now, the, last year I ran really, really low, but the problem was is the outside, the racetrack was breaking up. 90% of the cars would run the outside like that. Wow. I would run real real low on the apron. Well, what happened was is I was the one running it, and it ended up breaking the inside up, too, so the groove went away. So uh, I got passed by a couple guys, and I had to make, change my groove. Talking about breaking it up, that, as we were talking just then, uh, Rusty Wallace just went by uh, Labonte like he was stopped. Well, I think Labonte, once Rusty got the bottom, looked like Terry let him go. Yeah. Labonte is one of those drivers who picks his battles. Yeah, yeah. he'll you know? fight you later. Right, right. It's like, I don't have to fight you now, but I'm going to be back and get you later. I think he fights you when it counts. That's it. I think the old saying is, you want to fight? No, but I'm going to. <laughs> <laughs> That's yep. Bill Elliott there. He's uh, getting by Mike Wallace. Mike's just a little bit off on the uh, corner time. He got Earnhardt making it three wide, which is not unusual. <laughs> yeah, Ted Musgrave stick that car right on that yellow line. Which Derek Cope right there in the uh, main and tail Ford. His his car has been running really good today too. Yeah, Cope came from 23rd on the starting grid. He's now in 13. Michael Walters in the 30 car there. And his name is, has been dropped into the rumor mill about next season. He's been in the rumor mill for the past 10 years. <laughs> Chuck, Chuck right. Ryder likes him. Uh, he's here, a here. good race car driver. He's going to win sooner or later. He, he's good enough to win. Dick Trickle's back in the race after Bud Moore's crew repaired a broken power steering line. Presley and Wallace, the 93 winner. Dale Jarrett involved in a crash early on and is now, let's see, two laps down. At 88 laps, Mark Martin leads Jeff Gordon, Joe Nemechek, Robert Presley, the rookie, Rusty Wallace, Terry Labonte, and Morgan Shepard. Today's exclusive coverage of the Slick 5300 on TNN is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? 92 laps complete here at Loudon. Mark Martin continues to lead Jeff Gordon. Joe Nemechek having one of the best runs of his Winston Cup career in third as we watch this battle from ninth on back. Make it 10th on back. There's Bill Elliott in 10th. Ted Musgrave, 11th. Derek Cope in 12th. Michael Walter is 13th. Things among misters have kind of evened out. But up here, Rusty Wallace had moved past Terry Labonte and now goes after Joe Nemechek. Third place at stake here. Not for long. Nope. Wallace moves on by. Nemechek's gotten and into the right place. That's Rusty. He's a field general. When he's out there, he'll tell him, I want one pound out of the right front. I want this on the rear spoiler. Uh, do this, do that. All the way through the race. I mean, he is calling the shot for everything they do on this race car. Now here's Labonte, he's gotten past Nemechek. Here's the Kellogg's car up a notch and back into the top five. I have to say Rusty's one of the fastest cars on the racetrack. You know, he went by the 33, he went by the five, and uh, you know, he's, he's really um, running real well today. Dale Jarrett's made a stop for four tires. And you're riding with Dave Marcus, looking back to Elton Sawyer. Robert Harrington, one of the top uh, longtime crew chiefs in this sport, 
asked me to pass along a thank you to all the folks up here. He said, the hospitality we've been shown by even the people who park the cars, everybody at the racetrack, the folks at the hotels, everybody has been, he said, it's like it used to be down south with old-fashioned southern hospitality up here in the Lakes region of New Hampshire. He thought that was pretty neat. Well, we do too. I tell you, we notice that when we, we come in and out of the garage and we come in and out of the tunnel. I mean, even the tunnel guy, he acted like he was having a fun time parking the cars and stuff today. It's, you on your outside. it's not I often know. you have that. Here goes Rusty Wallace um, trying to get by Dave Marcus on the outside. And you're listening to Marcus's radio communication with his crew and spotter. Now, there are a lot of race fans up here. You'd never know it to read some of the major daily papers here that insist on covering stick and ball sports that draw about a quarter of the attendance that's here today, but that's the way it goes. <laughs> I, I talked to the I talked to Roger Bear um, that the owns bar. the racetrack. He told me that he had requests for at least forty thousand more Clear. seats. Gosh. I mean, he could have sold forty thousand more seats, but they can't get them in and out of here. I mean, this is like the maximum you can get in in here. And um, you know, he he would put more grandstands up because uh, I tell you, it's a, a really really pretty place and. Uh, yeah. They've done a great job of it. Ted Goddard here, who handles the facilities, told me this morning, he said, we've added 22 acres of parking. It's all used up. He said, we're going to have to work out how to shuttle people from Concord and from Laconia to ease the parking problem. And he says the biggest problem they have right now is so many people come to the racetrack, one person to a car. If they could alleviate that, it would ease traffic congestion coming and going, and they'd be able to get more people here. That's for sure. Here's a traffic jam in the making. Derek Cope making a move on Ted Musgraves there. Derek Cope has run very, very well today, and I look for them sometime during the year to really do something special because that's a good race team. It's Bobby Allison's race team. Looks like Joe Nemechek had his loose problem uh, back again from the time when you were mentioning it at the beginning of the race. The report we have on Nemechek's car is that uh, the brakes had been heating up and become ineffective, so he eased the car for a few laps, get a little more brake and pedal back in it, and then was able to go back after and pick up a spot or two. And yeah, that's not a good feeling, especially here, as long as the straightaways are and as flat as the corners are, the brake pedal starts getting spongy, and you start pumping about halfway down the straightaway to get enough pedal built up just to get in the corner. Not a good feeling. So at 101 laps, there's your leaders, Mark Martin and Jeff Gordon, the Valvoline Ford of the DuPont Chevrolet. We'll be back to New Hampshire International Speedway live on TNN after this. Welcome back to Loudon, New Hampshire, and the Slick 5300 live on the Nashville Network. For information on Featherlight trailers, call 1-800-800-1230. Featherlight, official trailer of NASCAR. Tense moment for Mark Martin as he tried to get past Jeff Burton right between turns one and two, thought better of it, and cracked the throttle. Jeff Gordon just one car length behind the race leader, Ford versus Chevrolet here. Mike, that's what makes Mark Martin the driver that he is. He's a, he never makes a mistake that takes him out of a race. It's give and take, and he knows it. He gets in there a little hot, and it might be a wreck. He'll back off long enough to get everybody straight again. We've had several questions about our in-car cameras and how they are chosen and why Mark Martin always seems to have one. Well, the folks that sponsor that car, uh, they obtain or purchase an in-car camera from TNN for every Winston Cup race we televise. Other sponsors do so likewise. In fact, on all the cable network telecasts, the in-car cameras are sold to the car sponsor. But, well, we say sold. They cover the cost of installing and operating the camera and the helicopter that hovers above the racetrack transmit the pictures from the race car, bounce off the helicopter, and then down to the Boykin communications truck next to our TNN truck, where you, where you get these great pictures from. You can see Jeff Burton's car there getting really sideways just in front of Mark Martin. I bet Mark's going, you know, I'd like to do something here pretty quick because it looks like the eight car is just a little bit off. You see the back end of the car jump around right there. Now, did he wave Mark to the inside? No, I don't think so. Didn't look like it. <laughs> <yet. laughs> no. Thought I saw a wave. Guess not. Well, pit stops will be coming up when, Glenn? 
Well, guys, I mean, Mark Martin's pitch, they're expecting him in uh, on the next lap. They gave him about a three-lap interval a while ago. They said they told me lap 110. They may go to lap 111. They're going to go with four tires. They're going to uh, obviously fuel. They're going to make a slight adjustment on the car. It was a little bit tight. They made it a little too loose to Mark's liking, believe it or not, even though he continues to leave a little bit loose. But very slight adjustment. Put it back like it was when the race started. Randy? Well, they're starting to rush around in Jeff Gordon's pit. I went up to Ray Everham. Uh, no strategy there. they got to take four tires. They're running second. Two tires are do you no good right now. Uh, you still got almost 200 laps left. Uh, the two car, Robin Pemberton and the guys, they're talking about when they're going to pit. Uh, they're also going to take on four tires. Uh, really no chassis adjustments to speak of down here, Glenn. I think there'll be wholesale pit stops next time by. I see nine crews standing on the wall holding Jackson tires and ready to jump, so pit stops are imminent. Boy, if Mark stops, that's a break for Jeff Burton and Jeremy Mayfield. Momentarily it is anyhow, but yep. they have to stop pretty quick too. Even though they're jet about to go a lap down, they're still running quite well. We all have the same amount of gas, right? That's it. <laughs> Seventh and eighth place, the Winston Cup champion and the defending champion of this race. Jeff Bodine surrenders his tail end of the lead lap position to become the first car to make a green flag stop in this round. And he will get four tires on his X-side four. Derek Cope, the straight arrow main and tail Ford is also in. Ooh, Jeff Sweet. Burton. I thought he'd cut a tire just for a second. Looked like Jeff Burton was going straight there. Here comes Mark Martin down the pit road as we speak. And Jeff Gordon stays out. So Mark Martin comes down towards Steve Meal and the crew, lap 113 if you're keeping tally at home. Pit board is also out for Kyle Petty as Derek Colt completes his service. Let's go to Glenn. Well, guys, as Mark Martin pulls down into the pits, they told us he was going to put on four tires. That's so we'd say that, and all the other teams would hear that. Now they have decided to go with right side tires only. So after they got everybody else's attention and said four, they're going to put on two right sides, send him down and away. They like the idea of what Jeff Gordon did. The right sides are on, he's down and away. Randy? Well, they're waiting for Jeff Gordon. I'll tell you, that is a funny thing that they did. Two tires. It does put the pressure on these guys down here. The two right side tires going around. They're loosening the left, the left side lug nuts, no doubt about it. They're going four. Robin Pemberton also waiting for Rusty Wallace. These guys wanted to pick up five bonus points, both Jeff Gordon as well as the two car. The left side tire is going on the 24 car right now. Good pit stop, shouldn't go left down, but Jeff Gordon away, 17 flat. Wow, these guys are cooking in the pits. They're waiting for Rusty Wallace to come down pit road. Great stop for Gordon. Oh, Ted yeah. Musgrave got four tires. Kyle Petty is getting four. Brett Bodine is in. So is Jeremy Mayfield. Ward Burton has four tires. Ricky Craven, Steve Grissom, the 23 of Jimmy Spencer. And let's go to Randy at Rusty no, Wallace. No wedge wrench for Rusty Wallace. Right side tires already on. Coming around, Scott Robinson with a jack. One pump, car up in the air. This looks like a good stop so far as well for Rusty. Yes, it is down and away. Another great stop on pit road. 16-5. Wow. I used to take that long to get it out of neutral and get it in low gear. <laughs> That's incredible. Now, remember, that they, they, they've changed some of the pit road rules at the beginning of the year this year. So um, most of the stops were 20 seconds, 19.5 and stuff like that. Now they're back to going 16.5, 17 flat. Rich Pickles been in. Joe Nemechek is in. So is Rick Mast. Here's Terry Labonte coming down the pit lane. Mike Wallace has completed his stop. Todd Bodine is in as well, and Robert Presley is in. Here's Randy. Well, the boys for the Kellogg's Cornflake machine on the wall, poised and ready for Terry Labonte to hit his mark. Labonte brings it in nice and smooth, doesn't lock him up at all. Walter Smith with a jack, puts the Kellogg Chevy up in the air, automatic four-tire stop. You wonder what this is going to do to the strategy of Mark Martin right now. Around to the left side, Jack is up once again. Labonte having a good stop. Not as good as Mar uh, Martin's or Gordon's or Wallace's, it appears. He's down and away. 19.1 seconds for Terry Labonte. Here's Glenn. Presley's pit. Well, we got a problem in Robert Presley's pit. He came in for a two-tire change, and he stalled the engine. Something happened. It fluttered. I don't know if he was out of fuel or what. They sprayed some starting fluid in it, and it helped it start it back up, but he lost valuable time. The time that he might have gained with the two-tire change was wasted by the uh, car stalling. Tough break for Robert Presley. He's still got a good race car, though. 
And here's your leader. Dale Earnhardt and Ricky Rudd have yet to pit, as does Morgan Shepard. I tell you, I still think what Mark Martin and them did was a smart thing. I mean, you know, take two tires on on a green flag, you know, and um, make sure you can get some more guys a lap down. Well, that was obvious what Earnhardt wanted. He wanted those five points for leading the lap right there, and he'll probably be coming in pretty quick now. Well, that point battle is tight enough that those five points could be very important come season's end. Bobby Hamilton is in in the STP Pontiac. So is Sterling Marlin, the Kodak Chevrolet, the Span Ford of Lake Speed coming in for its stop. Four tires for Sterling Marlin and four for Bobby Hamilton. Lane called in from Connecticut, must have seen that cover story in Forbes magazine this week. Wants to know if it's possible to buy stock in NASCAR. <laughs> well, they don't need it. <laughs> Wish it were. The France family in Daytona Beach found it and privately holds the National Association for Stock Car Auto Racing. So uh, you won't find it listed, folks. However, some of the speedways are public corporations. Uh, contact your local broker for information. Here's Ricky Rudd. The defending champion of the Slick 5300 with his tied Ford. Morgan Shepard is also in, and Bill Elliott in the McDonald's Ford. Watch Bill Engel's team go to work here on Ricky Rudd, and this looks like a two-tire stop. That looks four-tire. There's a uh, You're right, tire sorry. man on the, in the bottom. Yep, down there at the right rear, loosening those lug nuts. Four-tire stop. Morgan Shepard got only two. Bill Elliott will get four. Rudd is away. Chassis change on the right rear of Elliott's car. Hut Strickland is in, and Darrell Waltrip, the gas mileage king of NASCAR, finally comes in. Lap after everybody else. There's Darrell in the Western Auto Chevy. Told us yesterday, if you missed her telecast, the car wasn't quite right. He wasn't quite sure how he would run today, but he's held on to the lead lap. He told me, he said, don't worry about how I'm running. I'll be up near the front when it's over. I said, okay, I'm going to keep you to it. Bobby Hillen is in. So is Jeff Burton getting right side tires on the Ray Vestas Ford. Mike, you can see the difference in a car that has tires right now. You see Earnhardt just moving over and letting Rusty Wallace go. Earnhardt will be coming in this time. I'm almost sure. The pit board is out for Dale Wrong. Earnhardt. <laughs> Way down in turn number one. Last pit stall. I just want to see him run another lap. He moves over like uh, he wants these cars to go on. Darryl, uh, Dale's off the pace quite a bit right now. He needs to get in the pit. I'm sure that, that you know, they're all hoping for a, a caution now because if they have a caution, Dale Earnhardt's going to look like a real smart guy because, you know, most of the guys are going to be a lap down. Dick Trickle, the Bud Moore Ford Quality Care Thunderbird on pit road. And now they're up on top of the wall in the Earnhardt pit, so here he comes. Glenn Jarrett, two tires or four? Mike Richard Childers told me uh, this will be four tires, but after I said what I did on race day this morning, I don't know if they'll tell me the truth or not. <laughs> no, he said it would be a four-tire stop. They're going to make a slight adjustment with air pressure. The car, not exactly to Dale's liking, but uh, they've waited as long as they can. They went a long way, in fact, further than anybody has gone so far on this stop. They go to the right side, nothing unusual going on right now. The left side lug nuts are being loosened, so it will indeed be a four-tire stop. Looks like a good stop. I didn't get a clock on it. I hope somebody did, but this looks like a real good stop. Left side's on it now. 17.3. 17.3 seconds. Excellent stop by Dale Earnhardt's crew. Michael Waltrip in the Pennzoil Pontiac and John Andretti in the Kmart Little Caesars 4 become a couple of the final drivers to pit under this round of green flag stops. <laughs> Wake up! We'll be right back. <laughs> Opryland USA is the official destination of NASCAR. For more information, call Monday through Friday, 615-889-6611. Bobby Labonte led a lap, but his interstate battery Chevy is now on pit road getting four tires. And he'll surrender the lead to Mark Martin. Green flag pit stops have been completed. Just about back where we were with Mark Martin leading Jeff Gordon, Rusty Wallace up to third, and Terry Labonte in fourth. Glenn Jarrett's in Mark Martin's pit. Well, Steve, you made a little bit of a gamble there to try two tires, was it because of what Gordon did, or you just wanted to see what your car would do? Well, Jeff ran real good on his two, and 
in the first yellow when we put all four. The lefts were just perfect, so we thought we'd just go ahead and get right and try to keep them getting lapped or have a little bit of a lead when everybody else pitted. Get us some breathing room and maybe stop a little short the next time if there wasn't a caution. Typically at New Hampshire's plenty of caution, so it wasn't really a big gamble. Is it just what Mark said there's a lot of difference with the way the car feels? No, he hadn't said a word. He just wanted to know where the leader was before everybody pitted. If we'd been lapped, I just told him he was the leader, so he's just kind of riding right now. Well, he definitely knows where the leader is now. Yes, he does. <laughs> That's Steve Meal, who grew up in upstate New York. For five years in his late teens and early 20s, he hung out at the l &R Speed Shop in Malta, New York. They ran a record service during the week and sold speed parts and went stock car racing on the weekends. Sad bit of racing history is the l &R Speed Shop. It's torn down this week for further development. Steve Mill, one great crew chief, though. You see Darrell Walter fixing to go a lap down to Mark Martin, the race leader here. D.W. said, I don't think so. I'm going to race you just a little bit. We'll pick up with the pace. One thing about Darrell, you don't know what he has until somebody puts a little pressure on him. <laughs> well, he heard you were talking about him. <laughs> Front straightaway. Martin looks to the inside. No. Nothing there. Now, where's Jeff Gordon? Right there. There's the difference in the pit stops. Two tires versus four. There's the second place car. Right behind the number 40 of Rich Bickle, the Kendall Pontiac. And here's the race for sixth place with Derek Colt getting underneath Rick Mass. And here comes Ricky Rudd, last year's winner of this race. Twelve straight years, Rudd has won at least one Winston Cup race. Hasn't yet won this year, but last year he hadn't before he came here to New Hampshire. Well, usually as the racetrack gets slick, he gets better and better because he's one of the best slick track drivers I've ever watched. And uh, don't count him out yet. If he's in the chase late in the day. Rudd will be a contender. 133 laps complete. The race is stabilized after this round of green flag pit stops. So we'll take a quick break and be right back to New Hampshire after this. <laughs> well, we're in New Hampshire, and the flags are flying. Quite a variety here. If you see the TNN team going down the road in the new Winnebago from Cedar Ridge Motorhomes, give us a wave and give them a call. Winnebago and Cedar Ridge, the choice of champions. Call 1-800-988-4884 for more information. Well, that looks exactly like the one you drove up here this week. Yes, it does. No dents in that one either. Uh -huh. Sorry, Joe, just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky Rudd closing it down on Dale Earnhardt. He said Rudd would be a factor in this race, and he is proving it. Yeah, here he comes. He, you see how low he runs through the corner. He picks up the throttle. He's an ex-motorcycle racer when he was younger, and most of those guys understand traction because you know the last thing in a motorcycle you want is the back wheel in front of the front. Now, also tell me if tell me if this is myth or fact. When a driver comes back to a track where he last won. He's apt to be more competitive. I think momentum means a lot. It always meant a lot to me. If I could go back to a racetrack that I won at, I felt like, well, maybe I had a little something on everybody is the reason I won here. Then I usually got proved wrong by getting beat. But, uh, Ernie, you agree? Um, I'm not real sure. I, I don't think, uh, <laughs> especially when it's when it's happened, like Ricky Rudd came, it's a year from, from now. You know, it was a year ago that he won the race here. So. Um, I, I do think some of it has a, a factor and also like our team. I mean, we knew we, we had a pretty good setup to come here and um, we unloaded like the truck and we were pretty competitive. So the racetrack doesn't really change. Race cars doesn't really change. So usually you should be able to come back and um, run good if you uh, run good this time before. Well, Rudd's running well. Here's Earnhardt and here is John Andretti underneath. Jimmy Spencer makes the pass. Take it now, keep taking. Four, four, oh, four. Jeremy Mayfield is fun. Stay low, he's way up high there. Keep coming, keep coming. Buddy Barnes telling John Andretti to stay low and the run yellow the is out. Yep. Caution flag, caution flag. Keep taking now. You know, we get any more of these spotter radios, they're not going to need us up here. Oh, those guys do a great job. I tell you, they they get you out of more predicaments. From, they can see things you can't see from the race car. I'm kidding, folks. I like it up here. I tell yeah. you, you know, now, now, nowadays, spotters are actually having two jobs. There's actually being two spotters. You'll have, you'll have one spotter that, that judges what the cars are. Let's, let's take a look at this. 
Oh, you can't really see. Oh, oh. Oops. Looked like Rick Math might have gotten the back of Jeremy Mayfield. Turned him just there coming out of turn four. And Trickle just saved going into Rick Mass. Jeff Bodine made up his lap. He passed Mark Martin one lap ago, so he oh. is back in the lead lap. That's why you never give up. You run right. every lap like it's the last one. Ernie, you were saying two spotters. Yeah, I see a lot of times that what, what's happening is, is um, you know, you're having one that actually watches ahead and looks at Rex. You're having one other spotter actually be in the eyes in the in the tower. Look at this, everybody coming down pit road. And it hasn't been that long since they were in. About lap 120 for most of the cars, so they've been out there between 20 and 30 laps. This is where all the bragging rights start. Now we get to see which is the quickest of these three crews. Top to bottom, Mark Martin, Jeff Gordon, Rusty Wallace. And who will take two, who will get four? Two tires for Gordon again. Wow. It didn't even look like he hardly stopped. I thought he gassed and goed. Well, did he? <laughs> I don't know. He was out pretty quick. Rusty Wallace down pit road. Earnhardt shoves it in gear, gets the spot. Ricky Rudd, Mark Martin, Terry Labonte, Sterling Marlin, and Morgan Shepard off pit road. We'll come back and sort out the running order right after this word. We're under caution at New Hampshire. Today's exclusive coverage of the Slick 5300 on TNN is brought to you by Pep Boys Automotive Supercenter. Dale Earnhardt in that incident got into the back of Dick Trickle trying to check up and miss the incident. And the nose of his car is a little bit crushed in. Will that hurt it? Nah, I don't think so. I mean, just make it meaner and a little uglier looking. Yeah. Remember Earnhardt when he had the whole front end tore off of Bristol? <laughs> the good part is you see the screened area there in the front. That's where the air goes back to the radiator. And uh, that looks pretty good. So we're set to go back to green. Earnhardt, thanks to a quick pit stop by his crew, and then number one pit stall that goes to the champion, is out of the pit second and right behind Jeff Gordon. Rusty Wallace is third. Ricky Rudd is fourth. In fifth, that would be Mark Martin, who was leading when we came to caution. Sixth is Terry Labonte, and seventh is Sterling Marlin. Green flag at lap 148. Jeff Gordon got a great start there. Look at look at Rusty Wallace though, moving by Earnhardt on the bottom side there. You see Hutt Strickland and the green car there. Even though the back end of that car is torn up in a wreck earlier in the race, he's running quite well now. Three laps down though, Strickland in number 26. Rudd pulls to his bumper. Earnhardt's car is off. Okay, he's moving over here. He, he knows he's three laps down. You can see him getting out of the way of the lead car. Oh, we have a big mess here. Jeff oh. Bodine, Jeff Burton, Bobby Labonte. I know I got the fucking toe. Are three of the cars involved? Don't know whose radio that was. Wouldn't tell you if I did. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Todd Bodine comes to the pit lane, and Dale Jarrett it is may a grown also up have been sport. involved in that. <laughs> We're sorry, folks, but as as you well know, tempers flare. Trying to get a lap back is Mike Wallace. It won't happen as Gordon leads them across. As they pull on Todd Bodine's left side. Pretty torn up. Uh, he broke the pan out bar on uh, Todd Bodine's car. And look at Jeff Bodine's. That rear spoiler isn't doing much on the X-side Ford. And he just got back into the lead lap. Too. Yes. We'll come back and sort it out, folks. 149 laps are complete. We are under caution for the fourth time today. Welcome back to Loudon, New Hampshire, the New Hampshire International Speedway, and live with the Cup Racing on TNN. The AutoZone Tech Pack is brought to you by the more than 1,000 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, best parts in auto parts. You know, one of the most familiar faces in the Winston Cup garage area is that of Earl Parker II with Champion Spark Plugs. Now, if you've ever been at the track and seen the guys practicing, sometimes you'll hear them cut their cars off clean under full power down the back stretch. They bring the car into the garage area, remove the spark plugs, 
bring them right over to Earl's van. And Earl, what are you looking for when you read these plugs? Well, basically what we do is we examine the firing end, the end that is actually in the cylinder. We look for coloration and deposits that tell us something about the state of tune of the engine. Uh, we look for track factors, weather factors, anything that can affect the state of tune, uh, whether it's too rich, too lean, uh, an oil control problem, ignition energy problem, uh, any one of about 20 or 25 different things can be spotted. Well, why do they cut the car clean under full power down the back stretch? That basically is, is like taking a snapshot, a Polaroid, if you will, of what's going on in the combustion chamber at wide open throttle. And that's what you're really interested in. When you drive it into the pits and you chug it in, as we say, uh, the air fuel mixture is not the same. There's so many things that aren't the same. And it basically destroys the plug reading. It destroys the snapshot. Well, Earl has been doing this for Champion Plugs for about eight years now. Before that, the man they came to was Earl Parker, his father. And the amazing thing, Glenn, he does it all visually. No computers and no instruments. He looks at them and he reads those plugs. Here's your Goodyear mid-race recap. Brought to you by Goodyear, number one in tires. Six liters, nine lead changes, average speed. Counting the caution laps down to 108 miles an hour. Four cautions, and here are the leaders. Mark Martin has dominated today. You want to see how soft the springs are in this 24 car here. When he was rocking it back and forth there, it raised up some three inches on the left front spoiler. With the hood up, Bobby Labonte, and with the deck lid and rear area all apart, Jeff Bodine. As we get set to go back to green at lap 152, Bobby Labonte came in here ninth in the Winston Cup point standings. Jeff Bodine was 18th. Hold it down and let him go. Jeff Gordon brings him across as Labonte and Bodine rejoin the race. Getting his lap back, perhaps. Bobby Hillen on the inside. He does for now. He does. Look at Earnhardt. Here comes Earnhardt up on the inside. For the lead. For the lead. Rusty will kind of look this over to see which one of these guys you see making a move on Gordon on the bottom side. Takes over second place. Ooh, Ricky Rudd tries to come down, but Rich Bickle is there. Single file. Things just a little tense on these restarts for a couple of laps till it sorts out. Uh, yeah, they're def <laughs> definitely are. Yeah, they're they're not as tense as they are right after a crash. <laughs> but it looks like with the jockeying around out there, because are there times when you feel, well, maybe I can't get them when we're running, but maybe I could just get them on the restart. Oh, yeah. they're definitely, yeah. The man, there sure is Rusty Wallace and Dale Earnhardt. You know, that, that's, that's times of uh, the, the past, you know. Those guys have raced so much together, and um, now we're seeing it again. And both black cars and uh, both real good competitors. There goes Rusty. Looks like he's going to get by him this time. I think he's, he's going to try, but that three car is a rocket ship down the back straightaway. Didn't yeah. quite have enough stuff to make the move. Look at Rusty's car in the center part of this corner, though. He he may okay. just give him a little nudge, let him know he's there. I'm sure he probably will. <laughs> Rusty took a second turn of the wheel there coming out of the corner. Rusty's car is really getting through the middle of the corner. And, and that's what really you have to work on all day here at Loudon, New Hampshire. You know, you got to get through the middle. Everybody has about the same amount of motor and, you know, same amount of forward bite. And, you know, getting into the corner, or getting through the middle, that's the main thing. Lap 158, though lap 150 is halfway. And now it was not a green lap, so at lap 158, they'll pay the $10,000 bonus. Wow, he got oh. up under Jeff Bodine and really got him loose coming up out of that corner. That took every, that's just like lifting the back end up when you get that close on the car. He really got sideways there. Well, I'm sure Jeff's car's not handling it like it was, you know, because uh, he could stay in front of him. Okay, here we go for $10,000. This time by whoever leads it. Yeah, Earnhardt needs $10,000 more. Uh, but there's a lot of pride at stake, too. And some points. Ring the bell for ten grand. Uh, Rusty's oh. not going to let him have it for free. Won't be jet fuel for Rusty. It'll be jet in fuel Earnhardt's for pocket. Earnhardt. Yeah, right. Yeah. He's got a jet, too, yeah. Ru Rusty uh, doesn't have a jet yet, so uh, that's why he was wanting that 10000 so he could get him one. There's an Air Force right there in this film that we're showing you right here. The first four or five car, uh, cars that are racing right now, everybody's got an airplane. 
you must have them anymore to get from point A to point B. Well, and not just to go to the races, but the demand for personal appearances on these drivers is so great and their scheduling is so tight that oftentimes just can't accommodate the commercial airline schedule. It's a matter of convenience rather than a matter of status. Look but, at Rusty Wallace. He's making a move on Earnhardt out of turn two and down the back straightaway for the lead. And Jeff Gordon's got it the smart way because Rick Hendricks has airplanes. Jeff doesn't have to have one. And there you see Ricky Rudd. You can see him right at the back of the screen. Oh, Rusty got a little loose off the floor. I don't know it's going to go ahead. I wonder how that happened. <laughs> don't care to guess? Uh, look at Jeff Gordon now. His car runs well after about four or five laps. He didn't have the speed right at first. And Ricky Rudd coming along. Mark Mark still there. 10 cars Ricky Rudd. He's even with Rusty Wallace going in turn three. The sixth car there is Mark Martin, and just behind him, Morgan Shepard in the 21 car. The two Chevys took off, and they left the Ford four Fords to battle among themselves. <laughs> Look oh. at Morgan. Whoa. Mark got in up high. Morgan got real racy. The Wood yeah, Brothers yeah. Ford, the Citgo car. In the wall, turn one, Ward Burton. Just caught it with the left front. The car had already done a complete spin, but he went in pretty hard. And the Hardy Chevrolet will bring out the caution. This will be the fifth caution flag. Comes out of lap 162. Quite a bit of damage, you can see. That's mostly tire smoke. Ward was 29th in the Wista Cup points. Spun the car, but couldn't keep it off the wall. Didn't really see what started it. Mike, on a flat racetrack like this, when a race car goes around, it's got nowhere to go but outside. Yeah, that's for sure. When it comes around this way, it's got nowhere to go but on the truck, I believe. But we'll see. It looks pretty bad, especially the left front. Well, he drove it in, so at least they think they've got a shot to get him back in the race. Tom from Illinois called in on our 800 number, wanted a Bobby Hamilton out of Nashville, Tennessee. Any relation to Pete Hamilton, who won the Daytona 500 in 1970? No. No, no, no. <laughs> no. Two different parts of the country. Pete Hamilton from Dedham, Mass, and Bobby Hamilton from Nashville, Tennessee. Rusty Wallace will pit. Everyone else stays out at lap wow. 163. We'll let you know what they do to that car when we come back to Loudon. You're watching Wista Cup Racing live on TNN, the Nashville Network. Ward and Jeff Burton have both been on pit road. Welcome back to New Hampshire International Speedway. Mike Joy with Buddy Baker and Ernie Irvin up top. Here's your Ford Buddy Baker race driving tip. Brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? A few weeks ago at Pocono, we saw Jeff Gordon miss a gear on a restart. That moment could have been disastrous not only for Gordon, but for the rest of the field. If Jeff had panicked, the main rule of thumb when something happens to your car in the heat of battle is to hold your racing line. Don't swerve in the path of oncoming traffic. Another thing you must do is wave and let the competitors know that you have a problem. This allows the others to go by and gives him time to bring his car under control. And also maybe to get in the pit and let them fix the problem and get back into action. Thanks, buddy. 164 laps complete. Overcast skies here at Loudoun, New Hampshire, but temperatures in the mid-70s and a packed house. They're not baking in the grandstand today, and they're not trying to wring out the rainwater either. Let's take a look at the men behind the wall. Let's, uh, we'll start this little look with the 16 team of Ted Musgrave, headed up by Jack Roush and Howard Comstock, the crew chief. There are some of the folks that make that car go for driver Ted Musgrave, one of whom Glenn found is a rather interesting story in himself. Well, he certainly is a really nice guy. This is Bob Ripple, affectionately known as Uncle Fester. Now, Bob has been, uh, he competed against Jack Roush back in their drag racing day, so he's known him a long, long time. 
You guys have had a heck of a year. Exactly what are your duties on the team, Bob, or, or should I say Fester? Well, I'd rather be called Bob, the Fester thing. Kind of a joke. Uh, pit crew got the nickname the Adams Family. But I'll tell you what, this pit crew is one of the big reasons that we've been running up front and finishing good. This may, may be the best pit crew on pit road. What are your duties? Pardon? What are your duties? On race day, I do the gas mileage. He's always busy. I see him over here with his calculator, so I can't talk to him all the time. I have to wait till he gets, gets through with his work first. Awfully nice guy. One of the reasons this team has been so successful this year, Ted Musgrave, definitely the most pleasant surprise on the Winston Cup circuit this year, currently in fourth in the points. Thanks, Glenn. Ted Musgrave running 11th today. <laughs> totally nuts for NASCAR, they are. A lot of NASCAR fans here in New England. We'll be right back. Welcome back to TNN's live coverage of the Slick 50 300 here in Loudon, New Hampshire. We're under caution. This is the fifth one of the day for Ward Burton's crash up at turn number one. With today is Peerless Faucet's innovation in motion. Here's Larry McReynolds. Peerless, get more out of your faucet than just water. On a Winston Cup race car, this track bar, or panard bar, is a very valuable adjustment tool that teams use to adjust the handling on their race car. Up till about the middle of last year, teams really only use this tool during practice because it involved pulling a boat out, moving the track bar, putting the boat back in. You can raise this track bar and actually loosen the race car up, make it turn a little better. You can lower it and actually tighten the car up, tie the rear end of the car down. About the middle of last year, teams put this adjustment bolt in here and adjust it just as we adjust wedge on a pit stop. So now on a pit stop, you might see a crew member run this half inch drive ratchet down in this hole and they'll go this way if they want to tighten the car up. They may back it off if they want to try to loosen the car up. This is just another adjustment tool that Winston Cup teams have learned to use on pit stops to make their performance even better. And there's uh, Larry McReynolds at work. Yesterday he was the weatherman on our Saturday uh, telecast. Well said by a man that ought to know. Yes. Want to race his top crew chiefs? Uh, he watches the weather channel more than... Uh, baseball and well, he tapes it he, watch, he, said he Mike, watches the reruns too yeah did you hear what Mike called him Larry McReynolds well he was <laughs> yesterday let's go back to racing the front five without Rusty Wallace who made a pit stop under that caution period and Wallace will restart 19 maybe Rusty had to pit and cool down or something well it does get him away from Dale Earnhardt and Jeff Gordon who've been battling pretty hard yeah I don't think that's why he stopped I don't either Here's Gordon for the lead. I'm in there. I'm out of there. Randy, why did Rusty pit? Well, I wouldn't call it severe left front damage, but he definitely had some damage. It could have caused the tire rub. They had to come in and change the tires. Whether he got it from making contact with Earnhardt or some other car, it came from that incident when he lost the lead. Thanks, Randy. Boy, a lot of tension on these restarts. Well, Burton put down a little bit of oil in his oil dry on this racetrack. You can see Earnhardt go sideways in the middle of turn three. There's quite a row of, uh, you probably see it right there on the outside. You can see the oil dry through that corner. Pretty slick through there. Earnhardt's car is really uh, getting through the middle there pretty good, too. It's a lot better than it was on the last restart. Right. Ricky Rudd in third, Chevy, Chevy Ford. And Jeff, Jeff didn't go good on the last restart, so... Uh, Maybe he, if he stays in the lead for four or five laps and he's going to be able to be all right. Three wide back straight away behind the leaders as they work past Elton Sawyer. There's that mess. Wow. Boy, Sterling Marlin made the big move. It got underneath Terry Labonte and Sawyer, whose scooters Ford has run up the racetrack. That was some smart moves on everybody's part there to kind of give way a little bit because there was some oil dry on the outside. Look at Ricky Rudd. He gets by Dale Earnhardt now. Moves into second place. I hated to pick him to win two years in a row. It would be right two years uh -oh, in a row. Oh, wait a minute. No, you can't do I that. I can't hedge my bet. No, no. Okay. Where you start in the canoe, you finish in the canoe. <laughs> <laughs> well, my canoe sprung a leak, so I want another pick. <laughs> 172 of 300 laps. Jeff Gordon, the leader. Ricky Rudd in second. Dale Earnhardt in third. Chevy Ford, Chevy. In fourth, Morgan Shepard's Ford. Fifth, the Ford of Mark Martin. 
in six the four to Derek Cope and seven to Chevrolet of Sterling Marlin. There's that battle. From fifth place, Mark Martin, you're looking ahead at Morgan Shepard of the Sitco Four to the Wood Brothers. Our looks awful stable off the corner there. Morgan Shepard looks really good. He's right up front. He's run a good conservative race all day today. Just three cars ahead of them. I want to give a call to Todd Bodine in the Lowe's Ford. What an awful week. They went out to qualify, and Todd said the car just wouldn't run. And it, uh, Todd, excuse me, Brett Bodine, and Brett said the car just wouldn't pull, and it turned out the throttle wasn't opening all the way. Then they got to run second round qualifying, and he says the, the car just, something's holding it back. There wasn't any grease in the transmission, they found. I mean, just small things, but he ended up with a provisional start, and he's a lap down, but... He is the first car one lap down in 23rd spot. I was just watching Ricky Craven had to make him stop and go uh, just then. I don't know why, but uh, I think you know. Ricky Craven pitted early, and, but then didn't restart at the end of the longest line. He must have pitted with the lead lap cars. Craven is two laps down. So he will get a stop and go. And the winner of yesterday's Auto Palace 150. We'll backslide a bit in the field. Up front. Ricky Rudd puts the pressure on Jeff Gordon. Let's go down to Dale Earnhardt's pit and find out why Earnhardt has not been challenging Gordon for the lead off this restart. Stand, standing by with Andy Peachy. And Andy, we see some nose damage on the car. First of all, what happened and is it affecting the way the car is driving now? No, I don't think so. I don't think it hurt us any. Uh, it's closed up a little bit of the air opening we've got, but we also we had too much to start with, so that didn't really hurt. All right, is, is the car pretty much his liking? You told me this morning you thought you were really good. I know you've adjusted a little on it. Well, you know, our long two today has really been a long run. We haven't been that good uh, right off the bat on a short run, so I didn't expect we to stay up front right now. He'll stay in rhythm here. I think he can catch him back. Well, if anybody can keep it in rhythm, that man can. There's Earnhardt, three car lengths back of Ricky Rudd. And Jeff Gordon, the leader, in the point standing. They are nine points apart. Morgan Shepard, perennial top five point finisher, tenth in the points coming into this race. Morgan Shepard moved into fourth place, and uh, just behind him, your early race leader, Mark Martin, is following him around. Uh, Morgan Shepard is really running well today. No surprise, he's a good slick track driver as well. Indeed, you go to Martinsville, that's one of the cars you always have to worry about. He really knows how to get on that throttle and not break the car loose. I'll tell you what, Morgan is one of the guys that just seems to always finish in the top 10 in points. You know, he's there every day. He very seldom wrecks. He's um, real consistent. Uh, you know, I mean, Morgan's not a, a young whippersnapper. He's been here for a long time and a lot of experience. That's what they, uh, Darrell Walter said yesterday he has a bunch of experience. Experience. That's it. Experience. 53 years old, Morgan Shepard. 179 laps. Jeff Gordon, who is but 23 years old, continues to hold sway here at New Hampshire. We'll be right back. Today's exclusive coverage of the Slick 5300 on TNN is brought to you by Split Fire, the patented performance spark plug. It only costs more till you use it. NASCAR fans can make cruise history by cruising from Cape Canaveral to the Bahamas December 4 to 7 on the Big Red Boat. TNN and the Winston Cup Racing Wives Auxiliary will welcome Winston Cup drivers, including Kyle Petty, Todd Bodine, Ted Musgrave, Steve Chrism, and that old sea salt, Ernie Irvin. And the proceeds <laughs> will benefit the Winston Cup Drivers Wives Auxiliary. That'll be Ernie will be skiing off the back of the boat. Call 1-800-972-2359 for more information cruised with Buddy and I and Rusty Wallace one year, and there's places we can't go back to. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Carlos and Charlie's, I think it was. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah. <laughs> In Cajamel. Yeah. I hit my head real hard, but I remember a lot of that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> we have videotape. Oh. We got up the next morning, and here's this tape in Ernie's camera, and it was the whole party, and we're all watching it. Nobody knew who shot it until we realized you were the only guy that weren't in it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, I think we had another problem. We had several. <laughs> <laughs> we weren't handling too well, folks. Yeah. Here's Rusty Wallace, who restarted 19th, and now he's challenging Joe Nemechek for 12. Hey, those, those cruises are a lot of fun, folks. They trail the leaders by 9.8 seconds. Rick Mast right in the middle of that battle. 
And Sterling Marlin. The Winston Cup point leader right back in the chase. He's in seventh place just ahead of Terry Labonte. You know, he wasn't running all that good at the beginning of the race. I mean, you know, he was getting past and, you know, just wasn't all that well. Now they must have made some adjustments in uh, starting this car is fairly good. Mike, you want to know why this car really works as well as it does? Watch the back window down the straightaway. It's got a tremendous amount of down pressure on it. I yes, it does, buddy. I don't think that's what we're supposed to notice, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Hood's move, back window's move, driver's move. They're going. You know, going on that big red boat, that's that's going to be a fun thing for the kids. That's what it's mainly all about. Well, everybody behaves like kids on this course. Well, that's for sure. Yeah. You know, you know it's, it's basically we're going to take our families and uh, do some autographs and some other things. and It's going to be a lot of fun. Should be. 100, 11 laps to go here at Loudon, New Hampshire. Our Goodyear in-car camera showing you these pictures from Sterling Marlins, Kodak Chevrolet. I heard Tony Glover say uh, 30 90, I think. So that's 30.90 seconds the last lap. Right. So. And the pole this after the, the, today was like a, a 29 54, I think. That was Mark Martin. So, uh, you know, about a second and a half slower right now. Mm -hmm. Had two great races here yesterday. Had some 800 calls about those in the uh, Auto Palace 150 for Bush Grand Nationals. Was won by Ricky Craven, took the lead from Kelly Moore with just a couple of laps to go. And in the 40 lap modified shootout, what a thriller. Stephen Park beating Tony Hirschman and Jan Leedy in that 40 green flag lap shootout. Here's your Napa Field standing update. Napa, we keep America running. Here's how they're running 190 laps on the board. You know that window is caving in pretty good, isn't it, buddy? Uh, I didn't notice that time. Yeah, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> and here comes the 33 car. Yeah. Oh, did you see the 33 car? One of his flaps come up on his uh, on the uh, cow deal. A little difference in air pressure suddenly there yeah. when he got right into the draft of Sterling Marlin. See if you see that again. Oh, oh there it is, just fluttering a little bit. Right cow flap to the base of the windshield. You can notice a lot of stuff up there. Look at that crowd. You talk about race fans. Now, these people up here, they get a good dose of it. From one of the greatest hidden treasures they have in New England. That's the modified division oh. out here. Oh, oh. that's wonderful. Was that a great race? Jan Leedy bump drafting Steve Park all down the back straightaway, not once but several times, trying to get away from the field. What a great show. It is a great race. And uh, you will see that race played on TNN. Watch your local listings uh, because we will have a couple of replays for the modified shootout and the Bush Grand National race that was rain delayed. We didn't get to show you the finish live because it was nearly dark by the time we got that in yesterday late afternoon. But it will be on in uh, on TNN. Be sure to catch it if you can. I think it's a, it was Bush Grand National North. Race. Yes, it's you. Yep. Quite a good show. That's Ted Musgrave there in the uh, blue car, just following Robert Presley, number 33 car. They've run very well all day today, just hadn't got to the front where they can really make a charge. To answer Wally's question from Canada, uh, Ted Musgrave is looking for his first Winston Cup win. He has not yet been to victory lane. He's been close, and he's got quite a string of top five finishes and sits fourth in the points, as Glenn told you. Kyle, Kyle Petty just uh, retired his car, it looks like. Coors Light Pontiac to the garage. Let's visit with Buddy Barnes up on the roof to our right. There in the box is John Andretti's car. That purple and orange 37. And you see in the main picture, Buddy looking down in turn one where his car is. And now he shifts his gauge looking ahead to the next corner where John is headed. Trying to stay one jump ahead of what the driver is able to see. See, they, they only have one spotter up there right now. And a lot of teams are starting to get two spotters, you know, like I was saying. So that way, he actually just goes about when cars are trying to pass or you're trying to pass, telling you clear or, or if somebody's under you. But Buddy basically is trying to also watch ahead, make sure we're about wrecks. Now that's just to our right. Now he's watching his own car closely because of the proximity there to 
to Bobby Hamilton and that pack of cars he's coming up on. So rather than looking way ahead down the racetrack, he's keeping track of that battle, trying to pick out a lane for John to go to, high or low, that will be to advantage. We'll get back with uh, Buddy in a bit here. 197 laps complete, coming up on 100 to go. Jeff Gordon continues to lead Ricky Rudd, Dale Earnhardt, Morgan Shepard, and Mark Martin. Welcome back to Loudon, New Hampshire. August 24th through September 4th is the TNN Salute to Motorsports. TNN gives you more live racing than any other network. You'll see lots of great examples of it. Driver appearances, show cars, and a lot of neat stuff like the new uh, Brickyard Pace Truck. First time a pickup truck has paced a NASCAR race in our recollection. And a lot of new neat displays from the manufacturers, the sponsors, and the race teams. It's all part of what's going on at Opry Land this summer. For more information, you can call Monday through Friday at 615-889-6611. You'll see drivers throughout the theme park and exhibits and appearances and merchandise trailers and everything. The TNN Salute to Motorsports, August 24th through September 4th at Opryland. Jeff Gordon is the race leader. Rusty Wallace made a pit stop during that last caution, and he's gaining about two-tenths of a lap on Jeff Gordon, who is trying to move away from the whole rest of the field. Let's go to his pit. Well, Ray Everham's sitting here watching his driver. Is he just cruising right now, Ray? Well, he's running running as smooth as he can without using the car up. Um, you know, when you try and go faster, sometimes you go slower. So he's just being real careful. There's a long way to go, and we just hope we don't need any more caution. So we're just going to wait and see what happens. Can you make the car any better at all for him? He hasn't said anything. As we get closer to a pit stop, um, right now we're the same as everybody else. We're a little bit tight in the middle, a little bit loose off. Okay, yeah, probably so. <laughs> okay, Glenn. Well, I'm in Ricky Rudd's pit, and before the race this morning, Billy Engel told me that they were guessing that they were pretty much going to put the car like it was last year when they won. Have you had to change it much, Billy? Well, we changed a little bit, Glenn. Not too drastic of a change. Tide Force seems to be working pretty good right now. We just don't have anything at all for that 24. That thing has got some awesome traction up off the corner, and a Randy Dorton motor is pulling it pretty hard. Is there anything else that you can do to the car? Yeah, but I'd rather not talk about it right now. Well, you know, they won here last year, and that's always plenty of incentive to come back and do well. But if you want to see the real incentive that this crew has, it's this picture of Ricky Rudd right here. That's uh, 20 years ago. I'm sure glad he found his way to a barber. That's <laughs> yeah, out of the one, of one of the racing papers this week. My God. Let's watch Ricky's car closely and just see as he gets through the middle of the corner how much the body moves over the tires. Not very much on Rudd's car. Big market difference when we show you Jeff Gordon's car here in a minute. Right now, Bill Elliott battles John Andretti and Joe Nemechek, 13th place. Right here, Nemechek holds that position behind Rick Mass. Nemechek of the Burger King 87. Well, I said on race day this morning, I predicted the Burger battle. I didn't know it would be for 13th spot, but that's see, how Bobby, it is right now. You see Bobby Hamilton there making a the move on Andretti. And there's where some of the contenders are behind Jeff Gordon. I think the fastest car on the racetrack is being overlooked right now. Morgan Shepard is really getting around this racetrack. We'll get to him after we watch this battle right now between uh, Hamilton and, and Andretti off the corner. I think Shepard's one of them. I think Rusty Wallace is the other. Yeah, definitely. Rusty's running real good, too. Here's Shepard. Trying to get past Ricky Craven. Remember, Craven is five laps down in the Kodiak Chevy after winning here yeah. yesterday. Now you look at the back of uh, Morgan's car, you know, it, it, it transfers some weight, but when we see Jeff Gordon's car, you're going to see that it looks like it's popping a wheelie going down the straightaway. Looks like one of uh, the Gap and Roush drag cars yeah. from the 60s. Yeah, there it is. All right, so there's Morgan Shepard, who currently runs in fourth place. And here's Rusty Wallace moving on up. He's in 10th place right behind Ted Musgrave. Make that 11th place behind Musgrave and Robert Presley. These cars trail the leader by 12 and a half seconds. That's pretty impressive right there. He has worked his way from the tail end of this bunch all the way up to the 10th place now. And I, it looks like that car is really hooked up for Rusty. He'll be back up there to visit his dear friend, Mr. Earnhardt, before too long. If they could only see the smirk on your face when you say that. <laughs> they got a little close earlier, folks. <laughs> 210 laps complete. Jeff Gordon leads Ricky Rudd, Dale Earnhardt, Morgan Shepard, 
In fifth, Mark Martin. In sixth is Derek Cope. And seventh, Terry Labonte. Today's exclusive coverage of the Slick 5300 on TNN is brought to you by Midas, the Midas way, the way it should be. At Loudon, New Hampshire, Jeff Gordon has a two and a half second lead, or rather a 3.2 second lead. Dale Earnhardt's moved into second from Dave Marcus's car, Ricky Rudd now third. Now we'll show you what we were talking about with uh, Jeff Gordon and the weight transfer on that car front to back. Okay, we're, we're going to have to really look at it off of turn two, but um, you can really see the thing actually come off the corner and it like like has a lot of weight transfer to the to the rear end. The, the back end goes down. Well, when that's happening, you, usually, you know, the, the spoiler goes down and stuff, but let's let's watch it off of turn two. Here. Look at the gap at the left front fender between the top of the tire. Mike, the whole car is really soft. You can see the car down the straightaway just kind of transferring weight evenly front to rear. I mean, it's really sprung light. But these boys will try things, and it's a young team, and they don't act like you know everything. So they work together, and they really make this race car good. There is a school of thought that says soft springs and stiff sway bars at both ends. One way to get around a flat racetrack. Well, I tell you, you know, those are one of the guys that are, uh, you know, NASCAR legalized a rear sway bar now. Um, as of last year and these are one of the guys that actually run it a lot they run it almost every time you know like with our 28 car we haven't really been able to make it work you know you know this kind of tells us a little bit maybe you know different ways you have to do things you know with the rear sway bar here's the running order top five with Earnhardt having moved into second let's check that Ricky Rudd is the third place car then Morgan Shepard and Mark Martin here's Rusty Wallace shown in ninth, where he has passed Ted Musgrave and tries to pull down on Sterling Marlin. 84 laps to go. Here's the interval from first back to second. It's 4.3 seconds. Ricky Rudd in third, just behind. Earnhardt got that bloodied nose on his black Chevrolet when he got into the back of Dick Trickle after the car in front of Trickle spun somebody around. Jeremy Mayfield. Jeremy Mayfield That's spun. Right. Bill Elliott battles Bobby Hamilton. Elton Sawyer lap down and John Andretti. See Michael Waltrip in the 30 car there right at the back of those four cars. Five cars rather. Walker moves up and under Sawyer, who's running full time on both the Bush and Winston Cup circuits in the second half of this year. His Ford Credit Ford. We got a lot of race fans in Connecticut. Folks uh, tend to discount Connecticut. It's so small and so away from the south as a racing state. But I bet you Wednesday afternoon in Monaco, Ford, and Glastonbury, we'll have a couple thousand people there. See the race cars and visit with Elton. Now here's uh, Michael underneath getting past the Hooters Ford. Okay, a couple hundred people. <laughs> Dale Earnhardt created his own traffic jam here night before last. Our producer, Pam Miller, got into what she said was one of her worst fears. She got into the line of traffic for an Earnhardt appearance. It was almost like trying to leave the racetrack. The cars parked everywhere, <laughs> nine lines of traffic, all trying to get into this one dealership where Dale was signing autographs for two hours here in Laconia. And I mean, he, he draws the people, you know. You He's a seven-time champion and... Uh, you know, he's earned all that respect and kind of boy that is speed plugger. He, he's not starting he, to gain on some guys ahead of you just follow rusty up there and catch him you can do it he's not one of the guys that you know you, you don't very seldom see him you know nope. i live um in the same town he does and you know kind of mooresville i'm there all the time we never see del Earnhardt going to lunch or something like that he stays at his farm I, hey, see him every, all the time. I see him all the time. He comes up behind me and gives me a good rap from behind. <laughs> <laughs> On the street. In your street yeah. car, yeah. Oh, yeah. I told him, I said, this isn't a rental car, you know. He said, I got plenty of them right up the road. Yeah, he'll sell you one. 3090. 3090. 30, See, Sterling's still running the 3090. All right, now, now both you guys tell me something. Do you like having a spotter or a crew chief who's a coach like that an attaboy you can do it kind of guy or would you rather just get the facts and work on it yourself mike i tell you the honest truth when you have a guy pulling for you like that that was tony glover his crew chief talking to him and getting him 
into the game a little bit. You know, every once in a while, you kind of relax in these race cars. That was to perk him up and get him going again. You know, every every good uh, football team has people that make them really get up. You know, they have a, a pep rally. Bill Elliott on pit road. Here's Glenn. Mike, a little bit of a disappointing day for these guys. They started fourth, their best qualifying effort of the year. They really thought they were going to have something today, but they've missed the handle just a little bit. This car was completely reworked by Mike Beam when he went back to work for Bill Elliott. This is a four-tire change. Good pit stop by the guys. He's down in the way. They did make some adjustments to try to get Bill around the track a little bit better, but they're not satisfied so far with the way things are going. So Elliott comes back on track at lap 223 for the green flag pit stop. 77 laps to go. Jeff Gordon currently leads Dale Earnhardt, Ricky Rudd, Morgan Shepard, and pole sitter Mark Barton. Welcome back to Loudon, New Hampshire. 228 laps on the board. Green flag pit stops. Joe Nemechek coming in. You're riding there with Mark Martin, Glenn Jarrett. We cover both those stops. Well, Mark Martin already made his pit stop. Mike Nima checks in now. They were discussing a two-tire change, but they are loosening the lug nuts. They are going to make a four-tire change. Mark Martin had four tires, fuel, and took two rounds of wedge out. There's a nice cloud cover now. It's real pleasant out here, but things have cooled off, and a lot of the cars seem to be getting a little bit tight. Nima check is down with this four-tire change, and he's away. 20-second stop for Joe Nima check. Rick Mast is in with his goal Ford and the Morgan McClure Kodak Chevy. Sterling Marlin, the point leader has made his pit stop. So we're in the pit stop window. Bobby Hillen is in. As you ride with Mark Martin in the Valvoline Ford. Yeah, our camera shaking just a little bit right near the end of the straightaway there. Looks like he might have a tire jerking just a little bit. Earnhardt on pit road. The seven-time champion, third place in the points. Obeying the NASCAR Bass car enforced speed limit down the pit lane. Here's Glenn. Well, you know, to Earnhardt, uh, Mike, that must seem like the longest pit road on earth, but he's always got the number one pit stop down here. Uh, their car seems to work better the longer they go in the run. You see, he got back by Ricky Rudd to take over second. The, the track seems to come to him a little bit. They are making a slight adjustment with the air pressure on the tire on the car this time. You see the caved in nose on the car. He said it does not hurt it. He got an 18.6 second pit stop. That's awfully good work under pressure. Bobby Labonte is in the Interstate Battery Chevy, one lap down. And Hut Strickland is in. Ted Musgrave just got four tires in the Family Channel Four. You can see Rusty Wallace go by Earnhardt as he's coming out of the pits there. Uh, he's come all uh, the two car of Rusty Wallace has come all the way back to fifth spot already. Fourth now. Morgan Shepard on pit road. Earnhardt back on pit road. Yes. Let's first go to Randy in the Wood Brothers pit. I'll tell you, this is a cool bunch down here. I was talking with Eddie Wood. What are you going to do? I don't know. He was holding his fingers up. Two tires, four tires, two tires, four tires. Didn't know what to do. They've gone ahead and made the decision. They're going to go with two right side tires. Morgan Shepard's team fills the pump with gas. Morgan gone. Glenn Jarrett. Has come back in. The reason that pit stop was so fast, they did not get the lug nuts tight all the way around on the right on the right rear tire. He had to come back in, snug him up. That's a costly mistake. Earnhardt lost a lap to the leader on the stop as Rusty Wallace is in in the Miller Genuine Draft Ford. At least right side tires. He's well out from the pit wall. There goes the man with the left side lug nuts. That's a good indication it'll be a four tire stop. Elton Sawyer's in. The leader, Jeff Gordon, comes down pit road. So does Kenny Schrader. Green flag pit stops at lap 234. There's the stop for Jeff Gordon. Wipe of the windshield as well as four tires. No chassis change, apparent. Yeah, they're very pleased with everything. 16.9. Ricky Rudd is in of the tied Ford. Terry Labonte, the Kellogg Chevrolet. Mike Wallace, the Heilig Myers Ford. Dale Jarrett's in. And your leader. We're told unofficially, John Andretti has picked up the front spot as he has not yet stopped. Buddy Red Dog Barnes. Wearing our spotter cam today, and Reddy is the race leader at lap 235. John Andretti 
nephew of Mario, cousin of Mario. You are the leader, John. Keep digging, man. You got to get all you can out of these worn-out tires. Keep digging. That pretty much says it. Keep digging. But now watch how Musgrave will blast by him because Musgrave's on fresh tires. Folks, you want to see the difference between worn tires and new ones? Watch this 16 car. Hey, well, we're going to put right side tires on that thing right now. Go up to hell with that right rear air pressure. Bring it on in here this time. Two tires of fuel, John. Get it in close to the wall. That's Tim Brewer, too. Tim Brewer talking there. That's crew chief. Yeah, that's Tim Brewer. Tim Brewer's the crew chief. 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 So the fellas don't have to come so far around to change the right side because we're not going to do left. Mike, that's exactly what you were talking about. You see right there, even though Andretti's coming in the pits, he's much slower right, coming around through that can. corner. going to be the only one on pit road now. Only one on pit road. So John Andretti will surrender the lead. Kmart Little Caesar store. Get on in here. Did you hear what he had said? He said, fudge all you can. <laughs> <laughs> Did he mean the speed limit? No, uh, no, 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 no. Look, he was talking about pudding. But uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jeff Bodine is also on pit road. I've got to go now. Fudge all you can. Fudge all you can. Good thing we only provide the official booth with pictures, not right. sound. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that means pick up the pace. We know what that means. <laughs> Ooh, not much question about that. <laughs> okay. I hope you Michael Walter picks up the lead. I hope he you and his no brother Daryl are running one two. Petzoil Pontiac and the Western Auto Chevy have not yet made pit stops. This would be interesting if caution come out right now. Oh, yeah. Whole new shape for the Pontiac Grand Prix next year. Ken Miller from Pontiac told me yesterday the Street Grand Prix is better in the wind tunnel than these race cars are now. Wow. If that's the case, it'll be a whole other jumble of spoiler heights and angles and ride heights come 1996. 239 laps complete, and we're up on Waltrip's Mountain. The Waltrip brothers are leading here at New Hampshire International Speedway. We'll be right back. Today's exclusive coverage of the Slick 5300 on TNN is brought to you by the more than 1,000 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. Packed house here at New Hampshire. All those t-shirts in the grandstand, every one with the logo of a favorite driver on it. Let's show you what just happened a couple of laps ago between Mike Wallace, Joe Nivacek, and Jeff Bodine. See Jeff Bodine there in the seven car on the bottom side, Mike Wallace on the outside. A little contact there coming through the corner. That's as close to a wreck as you'll ever watch. Great driving by Mike Wallace to get that back straight. Battle rages on. Jimmy Spencer battling Rick Mass. And this is for 13th position. These cars are one lap down. Rick I look made at that pretty easy in going in there. I think Spencer realizes there's still a lot of racing to go here. He just backed out and let him have it. I look at some of the pit stop times, and Dale Earnhardt is back on pit road. Wow. Looks like they must have a problem with um, lug nuts again or something. And, of course, the speed limit down pit road is enforced under both green and caution flag periods, so Earnhardt will lose another lap. Right side tires. You know the bad part? Sterling Marlin's still out there. He's only running ninth place right now, but Earnhardt's having trouble, and this point thing is going on, and Jeff Gordon is gaining every race on, on the lead. Earnhardt is going to be out of the top 20 when he comes back up to speed. Michael Waltrip continues to lead. Jeff Gordon has moved into second place ahead of Darrell Waltrip. Morgan Shepard in fourth. Mark Martin, the pole sitter, in fifth. Terry Labonte in sixth. And Derek Cope running in the second spot. Whoever leads the points following this race, which is the designated halfway point in the series, 
will take home an extra $50,000 in spending money from the folks at Gatorade. In addition to that $10,000 to the leader of the halfway lap. Mike, we have a report that Earnhardt had a vibration in the car, and that's usually a uh, lug nut loose and wheels are vibrating around on the car. Darrell Waltrip has made his pit stop. Surrenders third place. Michael Waltrip remains the race leader. In Chuck Ryder's Pennzoil Pontiac. I'll tell you, you know, Gatorade's really uh, stepped up to plate with a lot of lot of different incentives. And, uh, you know, uh, we led the halfway point in the truck series and uh, got $10,000 for that. So great. It's amazing how much money they're starting to spend and you know, they're seeing the advertising. For Here's Rusty Wallace down to the inside of Terry Labonte. Sixth place for Rusty. We're watching a, a race there for sixth place. And I tell you, the two-car of uh, Rusty Wallace right now may be the only car that's running with Jeff Gordon on the racetrack as far as speed. Check and see when Michael Waltrip was last in the pits. It was in that last round of pit stops, lap 126. Uh, he was in under green, and then lap 163, everybody pitted under caution. So they are really stretching it. Doug Hewitt must be hoping for a caution to leave him out that long on worn tires when everyone else has got fresh ones. There's no doubt that, um, you know, they're, they're, they're searching for a caution and uh, that way they can um, get even with everybody else. Glenn Jarrett has more on the Dale Earnhardt story. He has now dropped to two laps down, Glenn, 26th position. Well, Mike, this is the right rear tire that they just took off of Earnhardt's car. Buddy Baker, you're exactly right. You can see the lug stud holes here are wallowed out. That's exactly what was wrong. The lug nuts were left loose. He came up the speed and just wallowed out. The vibration got so bad, they all had to come in and pit it. But you're exactly right, buddy. Loose lug nuts caused this problem. Looks like they uh, probably should have changed the, the tire and wheel when they uh, the first time because they Instead ran on of it. Instead just tightening it up. Right. They ran on it for a while. And um, now it may have tightened up and didn't actually get into the, to the angled part of the, the nut. Mike, you see uh, Michael Walter coming in, down pit road. Look how much brake he's using on the front there. Those wheels are matching. They're yellow, yellow. Look, it looks like a black wheel and a yellow wheel. That's how much brake dust is coming out on that car. Performance friction carbon metallic pads on all the Winston Cup cars. Steel rotors, of course, 11.3 seconds for just two tires. But the question is, where will Waltrip come back on the racetrack since everyone else has been going these last 10 or 15 laps on fresh rubber? I have to believe that um, some of the Winston Cup cars are running the Ray Vestas brake pad now, too. Oh, is that right? <clears throat> yes. Okay. Mike, he's almost a lap down to Jeff Gordon. Staying out there on those worn tires, it's nice to lead a race, but he lost a lot of position there running old tires when everybody else had come in and got four. So Jeff Gordon gets back into the lead. Morgan Shepard's now the second place car. The pole sitter, Mark Martin, has moved up to third. Welcome back to Loudon, New Hampshire. Mike Joy with Buddy Baker and Ernie Irvin. Glenn Jarrett and Randy Pemberton on pit road. And Tony Glover yelling encouragement to his driver, Sterling Marlin, as you ride the Kodak Chevrolet. That was funny what he said. He said it's only 18 feet to get by this car. Make it happen. <laughs> well, what, what he was doing is telling uh, telling him to, the spotter to tell Derek Cope spotter says let us go. You know we need to get by you. And um, man, it's only 18 feet. Yeah. <laughs> but it's also seventh place they're racing for. Yeah. You see, all the spotters stand in one area up on the roof to the right of our broadcast position. So, uh, and since they all wear uniforms. It's not hard to tell who you need to go talk to if you either need a favor or need a little help or need to give somebody a little encouragement. Like 17 or 19 feet. Yeah. Mike, Mike, I can guarantee you, he wasn't asking his father to give him anything. They're racing for right. position. Yeah. And, and speaking Mark of racing Martin. for position, second place right here. Mark Martin, the pole sitter. He's up for a balance of nearly a hundred balance bonus of nearly a hundred thousand dollars. That Unical bonus. $7,600 if the pole sitter wins the race, and if he doesn't, it rolls over, and they add 7600 each race until somebody gets it. That's getting up into six figures right there. 
Okay. Seventh place. Coke got out a little bit wide Ooh, there. Oh, he only got nine feet. <laughs> <laughs> didn't get all 18. No. Oh, he was, he was like beside him and still didn't get him. Here comes Sterling. Uh -huh. He's going to put a little heat on him, it looks like. Yeah. A little wiggle. Oh, boy. Glover will be talking to him here in a minute. Can you find her spotter? <laughs> I told him. Okay. Uh-huh. Close, but no cigar. Well, if you're driving Derek Cope's car, and your spotter tells you, uh, the four car would like you to move over, please. Yeah. What is that, like, pass the gray coupon? <laughs> I mean, come on. He just shook his head. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They didn't say if he shook it side to side or up and down. Just look where you are. We'll get here in a minute. I mean, it's, a, it's racing for a position, right? Right. Yeah, well, I don't blame him for not moving over. Right. Seventh place. You know, Ernie, that might be just a little more chatter than I'd like in a car when I'm racing real close to somebody. I'd like to have the opportunity to think a little bit for myself, too. <laughs> Well, you know, Tony Glover's a, a different type of person, and uh, he's funny. I mean, you know, they're from, you know, the, the team's up from Bristol and all that. They, uh, well, they talk a little different up there. Well, did he, coach than us. <laughs> did he coach you like that when you drove that car? You know, he didn't really coach me much. He was, anytime he was talking to me, he was like, okay, calm down, calm down now, come on. <laughs> now, he's, he's got Sterling saying, okay, get it, get it going, get it going. He yep. would have to calm me down most of the time. You don't particularly like a spotter to talk a lot. No, I, I hardly ever have a spotter talk to me. You know, um, you know. Now, I, I've listened to drivers. They, they always tell the driver will always want to have them tell you if there's a car under you, high or whatever. I never really like that. I like to just be able to judge for myself, and um, uh, you know, it always was my type of deal. Okay, we're watching for Dave Marcus's car just ahead of that battle, and the battle for second place remains a good one. Mark Martin, Shepard. Mark Martin putting a lot of pressure on Shepard, but Shepard's car is really getting through the corner quite well. I think Mark turned the wick up just a little bit, though. He has an incentive. Whole position right now is going to collect a lot of money if he can win the race. I think Mark needs to have his spotter tell Morgan Spotter that we only need 18 feet. Oh, yeah. we have a car in the wall, Jeff Bodine in turn four. Oh, he makes it across. The yellow flag is out. Bodine makes it across to pit road. Second incident he's been involved in today. We needed a caution, but we didn't want to see somebody wreck. The XI Ford comes to a halt. Man, they don't hardly have enough to work on this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where is the fuel cell at? It's like oh, gone. Something under there somewhere. And back to the line. Oh, look, teamwork happening. Kenny Schrader, <laughs> who, like Jeff Gordon, has a race car owned by Rick Hendrick, as that was Ernie Irvin who pointed that out. Yeah. Kenny gets a lap back from the race leader, so that will put Schrader back onto the lead lap. Now, I wonder if Rick Hendricks gives uh, Schrader or uh, uh, Jeff Gordon an extra bonus for letting one of his other cars have a lap back. I wouldn't think. What? But... Never if you're going to do a favor for somebody, it might as well be your teammate. Yeah. Because yeah, you're going to need a favor him. someday. Oh, yeah. Sure. I mean, that's the, the same guy signs all three checks. You know? And they're all, there is the chance that Schrader beat Gordon back to the line. Uh, yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> uh, I, I said, uh, uh, okay. You know, I think we'll see pit stops. The only thing faster than that 24 today has been our camera people on top <laughs> up here. They can go by him and pick up the next car in front of him. He's yep. done a great job. And here is Jeff Gordon. Ray Evernham's crew get one more shot to put tires on this car and fuel. We have 30 laps to go. When they make this pit stop, it'll be an old-fashioned ah, shootout. I wonder if we'll see some two-tire stops right now. Well, let's see. Randy? I don't think so, but you never know. I'm going to check on Jeff Gordon's car right now. Looks like they're going, too. Nobody loose their left side lugs. No chassis adjustment on the 24. The two-car fits right in front of them. They want to go forward. Glenn Jarrett, what goes on up that end of the pit road? Two, two tires up here for Mark Martin, guys. That's all they, that's all they call for. That's all they ever, ever planned on doing. It was two tires for Morgan Shepard. He beats Mark Martin out of the pit, as does Terry Labonte. So two tires from here, two tires for Shepard. 
They're risking. They're, they're making that gamble. I think it's going to pay off for them. Gordon is the first car out of the pits. Morgan Shepard is second. Mark Martin is third. Terry Labonte is fourth. Ricky Rudd is fifth. Sterling Marlin is sixth. Rusty Wallace seventh. Ted Musgrave eighth. Here's how they're running after pit stops. We'll recap in a moment who got two tires, who got four. Jeff Gordon, Morgan Shepard, Mark Martin, Terry Labonte, Ricky Rudd, Sterling Marlin, Rusty Wallace, Ted Musgrave, Rick Mast, and Derek Cope are the top ten. There are now 22 cars on the lead lap to shoot it out. We'll double check that in a minute. No, that can't be right. Getting set for the restart. The cars that got only right side tires have 40 laps on their lefts. We'll see how this plays out over the next 27 laps. Darrell Waltrip's on the tail end of the lead lap. Moves aside for leader Jeff Gordon. Morgan Shepard in second. Mark Martin in third. Terry Labonte in fourth. Fifth, Ricky Rudd. Sixth, Sterling Marlin. Seventh, Rusty Wallace. There are 16 cars on the lead lap, counting Darrell Waltrip. Not 20, as I said when we went to break. 16 cars on the lead lap to now, shoot it out. Actually, Darrell Waltrip could have started on the outside lane. Yes. So um, he was being a big sportsman and, and moved to the inside lane. And he also has a preferred line if he gets a jump right here. <laughs> <laughs> and perhaps he will. We are under green, and Waltrip has a half a car length on Jeff Gordon. Three cars break away by about a length, but they have that high line into turn number one. Gordon, the 21 of Shepard, and the six of Mark Martin. Back to racing with 26 laps to settle this. They're riding with Mark Martin in third place. Gordon and Shepard broke free of everything there. They're out front. You see Bobby Labonte in the interstate car there. Looks like he and... Uh, now he's a lap down, too. He and Darrell fighting for 16th place. Jeff Gordon has sprung the latch and the barn door is open and he has taken off. Let's see if Morgan Shepard can reel him in. I think Morgan's going to have his hand full with the six car of Mark Martin, but I don't really, I don't think he's going to run the 24 car of Jeff Gordon down. It looks like he might be the dominant car right here. Right now, riding with Sterling Marlin as Dale Earnhardt goes by. Earnhardt is two laps down. He's got three or four behind him now. 16 cars are. Well, there's a guy, if he ever does get back up front again, I think can run with Jeff Gordon. Wallace? I think uh, Rusty Wallace can run with him, but he's really got bad track position right at the moment. Well, he puts okay, you're down anywhere. Wallace has to pass 11 cars to get back to the front. Most of them are on the lead lap. Very side by side with Ted Musgrave. What he has to be careful about, he might be quite a bit faster, but you have to play with the cars when you're passing them here. You just can't run up there and block them out. So uh, he's got to be careful not to wipe himself out, too. He gets under Nemechek, who's one lap down. Actually, Morgan Shepard um, is running right there with the 24 car. Yep. Yeah, Morgan's not losing anything to Jeff Gordon. Sterling Marlin's off just a little bit down the He lost way, 18 baby. feet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's Derek Cope and Bobby Allison's car, the main and tail. Number 12, just ahead of Sterling, and here comes Bill Elliott. John Andretti coming back toward the front, and Kenny Schrader, who is back on the lead lap. Number 25. Jimmy Spencer there in the Campbell 23. Spencer is, wow, on the lead lap. Yeah, he's on the lead lap, and he's running pretty good. He just hadn't had any track position today. You see him moving around there on uh, Ted Musgrave trying to make up position. Musgrave to the outside of Derek Cole. And now here comes Marlon. You're with them near 150 miles an hour as they get down that back straightaway and into turn three. Morgan Shepard, the gap constant go, to race leader Jeff Gordon, but closing in is Mark Martin. And just behind him, you see the five car of Terry Labonte. He is running them all down. He's running quite well. This is uh, on back in the pack there. But here comes Terry Labonte. You see him catching more. Uh, Mark Martin going in the corner there. 
Ooh, Rusty Wallace on the inside of Schrader. Right there with Earnhardt. And here is Labonte. Closing in on Martin. This may be a four-car shootout 20 laps from now. Well, the first place and fourth place car right now are team cars, and uh, they have basically the same engine. So uh, it's just whether they made the right uh, adjustments on this car. You know Terry Labonte knows how to win. And we saw Labonte earlier. A car would get up alongside him. He'd let him go and drop in line, like we said, picking and choosing his battles and when to make the run. This that, could be the time. That part of the race is over. This is grab and go now. Eric Cope underneath Joe Nemechek, who is not on the lead lap in the Burger King 87. One lap down. This is Sterling Marlin we're riding with here, coming out of turn two, going down the back straightaway. You see Nemechek start all day long. The back end's been doing that, jumping out sideways. Marlin's got a fender under. He's pulling alongside, makes the pass. <laughs> Way to hustle now, Hammer. Did you say Hammer or Hamburger? No, Hammer. Oh. Michael Waltrip in 14th position, racing with 23, Jimmy Spencer, 37, John Andretti, and the one of Rick Mast, Kenny Schrader in the 25. Those are all lead lap cars. 16 laps to go. Let's take one more break, and then we'll carry you through to the finish. You're watching Winston Cup Racing Live on the Nashville Network. Today's exclusive coverage of the Slick 5300 on TNN is brought to you by Napa. We keep America running. John Andretti off the pace in the Little Caesars Kmart. Kranifus Haas Ford. Had been running in the lead lap and in the top 10. But now we'll just have to roll this one out for 13 more laps. Down to 11 laps, Mike. And, and uh, I'm telling you, it's just this car run very well all day. Lead lap and everything. But you can see it's all over. Tell you, Jeff Gordon uh, has, what, you know, 10 or 11 laps to go. And uh, doesn't look like anybody's going to be able to uh, beat him. Well, we asked the question at the top of the show, is this the year that youth finally overcomes experience? Maybe it is. Jeff Gordon, 23 years old, will celebrate his, his birthday at the Brickyard. Mike, there's one thing you can't do. You can't celebrate 10 laps from the finish. You, you no. know you're the guy sitting beside of you at the Brickyard last year was leading a race and had a flat right near the end of the race. The race is never over until the checkered flag falls. You wanted to say to the fat lady sing, didn't That's you? That's it. That's <laughs> it. She's humming, but she's, she's not humming, singing yeah. yet. Get the pitch pipe. Ricky Craven has cut a tire down. He's coming around at reduced speed. A 1.4 second lead for Jeff Gordon. Morgan Shepard is second. Pole sitter Mark Martin is third. Terry Labonte is fourth. Ricky Rudd is fifth. Sixth is Rusty Wallace. And seventh, the run for Derek Cope today. You know, I talked to Jimmy Finning, um, the crew chief for that car, and he said that, you know, the beginning of the year they ran real well, and then just all of a sudden they lost everything. They really weren't running that good. And he said he went back and tried to, you know, just make everything the same, and we're going to start over again. This is not an end. Now behind them in eighth place is Ted Musgrave, and in ninth is the point leader, Sterling Marlin. If Marlin is unable to improve on his position, Jeff Gordon is going to get that 50 grand from Gatorade for being the halfway season point leader. Can you believe that? Like he needs 50,000. <laughs> <laughs> He's only seven points behind Marlin going into this race. And Marlin hasn't led. And is, and is ninth. So Gordon will get 175 for winning, plus, if he wins, five points for leading at least a lap and he may wrap up the five points for leaving the most laps yeah good so there's a uh, musgrave and here's marlin you're riding with sterling so it could be a uh, fifty thousand dollar bonus for, uh, Jeff for sure the kenny schrader there just behind sterling marlin he's really flying through here right at the moment Keep it in it. Now, you see that back window going up and down. We had a call in our 800 number asking if that window was glass like in your passenger car. No, it is plastic or Lexine. 
That's why it's got a little give to it, but also it is shatterproof. Right. Where even safety glass is not completely shatterproof. Right. Five to go this time. Now, if Ken Schrader gets ahead of Sterling Marlin, that's four less points for Sterling. Four less, yes. From first through seventh place, the Winston Cup point breakdown drops five points per position. Then for a while, it drops four points per position. And then the rest of the field drops three points per position. Yeah, it's like first through seventh or something. Like I think that. so. And then seventh through twelfth, it drops four points per position. Right. And then three points per spot from there on back. See Ted Musgrave's in the 16 car there. He just passed Jeremy Mayfield. Jeremy gets real loose right in front of Sterling Marlin. That's something you don't want to see before laps to go. No, sir. And Marlin underneath the 98 of Jeremy Mayfield there. The Western Auto Mechanic of the race, Ray Evernham. Crew chief for Jeff Gordon. And the leader of the Rainbow Warriors on that DuPont refinishing Chevrolet. And well earned. And go back again mid-pack for this battle. From ninth place on back. Sterling Marlin with Kenny Schrader and Rick Mass trying to eke out a top 10 finish here. We haven't said much about Rick Mass, but uh, he's right there in uh, what, fifth or sixth? Tenth. Tenth. Have a strong day today. Well, if anything does happen to Jeff Gordon right here at the waning moments of this race, Morgan Shepard will win his first race this year because he is really holding the same interval as he's had. And, uh, you know, it can happen. Jeff Gordon got into the wall right there when he was qualifying. Yes. The black marks tell it all. And for taking on those two tires and setting the stage for pit stops all day long, the number 24 crew under Ray Evernham also wins the Thompson RCA Pit Strategy Award for the day. You see the Rainbow Warrior and the Tomahawk there. That's part of the uh, White crew. flag. White flag for Jeff Gordon. Last lap. Jeff Gordon trying to join Rusty Wallace and Ricky Rudd in the New Hampshire International Speedway record book and trying to pick up his fifth Winston Cup victory. He's kind of eased up, and Morgan Shepard's closing in a little bit on him. He pulled it down to about 15 or 20 car lengths, but it looks like Gordon's day. I think he was just trying to make it in. Off turn four into the checkered flag. Jeff Gordon wins the Slick 50 300 at New Hampshire. Morgan Shepard is second. Third goes to Mark Martin, the pole sitter. Terry Labonte is fourth. Ricky Rudd is fifth. We'll come back, go to Victory Lane, check on the Winston Cup point standing, give away that Gatorade 50 grand, and more right after this. Welcome back to New Hampshire Inter International Speedway, where this record crowd is beginning to wonder how they're going to get to their cars and get on the road. Jeff Gordon celebrates in Victory Lane. Glenn Jarrett's there. Well, Jeff takes a nice seat on the hood of the car, and... To the best of my recollection, the only time that anybody else has had any fun this week was when you crash qualified, man. That thing was awesome today. It was. Uh, I tell you, I got the best dang crew chief out there. He's he's amazing. Um, you know, people talked to me this morning, and, I mean, we didn't do any practice for this race. Uh, that just shows you how good he is and or how lucky he can guess. I don't know, but, uh, you know, I was pretty confident in him going into the race. We had our troubles, and... You know, this is a, a big test for this team to, to prove how strong we can be. Uh, we overcame a, an awful lot today. Uh, I got to thank them, this DuPont crew and, and DuPont Automotive finishes, Valvoline, Coca-Cola, Xerox, Kellogg's. I mean, Goodyear Tires had a great tire today. And, uh, of course, uh, that Chevy Monte Carlo was awesome. So, uh, man, I tell you, what a day. What a day. Well, he got everybody named there. Uh, first time anybody this year has had back-to-back -back wins. Uh, you're on a phenomenal roll right now. You get the bonus for leading the points at halfway. But uh, Ray Everham stays inside your head. We were monitoring the radio there the last few laps, talking to you every lap, keeping you calm. He he was. He was definitely keeping me calm. I almost had to come on there and say, hey, I know, man, I know. But, you know, that's just how good he is. I mean, he watches every corner, every lap. 
and he knows that that if he doesn't talk to me i'm going to drive in deeper and deeper and deeper every lap and every time he didn't talk to me that's what i did and i'd come on the radio and start complaining he'd say you know start backing it off slow down slow down as soon as i did that bang man i just started taking off and he made some great calls some two tire stops and everything and uh, I guess the only other person I got to thank is God. Uh, man, he's definitely blessing me, that's for sure. Were you guys talking at all about that $50,000 bonus uh, from Gatorade? I, you know, I, I, I got to thank Gatorade, too, because they, they put up a lot of money, you know, to this sport. And we had a press conference the other day, and I really, you know, I w wasn't even really in the conversation much. I was just sitting there because, uh, you know, I was second in points. But um, th this, this is just great. I got to say hey to Rick at home. I told you, buddy. I told you, you better be here, and uh, he's not. But uh, we're leading the points. Got that fifty thousand. That's great. All right, we're gonna let him go celebrate. He wants another kiss from his wife, Brooke. I want one too, but I'm not gonna get it. So let's go to Randy. <laughs> okay. Morgan Shepard all smiles. Morgan, you gave it a heck of a run, but the kid's pretty tough. Yeah, he was uh, pretty strong. Uh, the 24 car was strong all day. But I tell you what, the Seco Thunderbird just kept gaining and gaining, and uh, uh, it seems like through turn one, I could gain on him a little bit, but. Uh, I couldn't gain anywhere else, and uh, I was just trying different lines, and uh, we just couldn't come up with anything. I'm just, uh, I feel almost like we won the race, uh, the way things have been going for us, so uh, this is a big turnaround. Hey, I'd like to say, we got uh, Fran and Larry Britton here, and I'm glad they could be here uh, to support us. They're our sponsors, Sidco, and uh, we're real thankful to these folks. Hey, congratulations on a good run, Morgan. Thank you. Glenn? We're, we're back in victory lane. Of course, this is the smiling face of Ray Everham, uh, Jeff Gordon's crew chief. And, uh, you know, I might have to go along with Jeff. He may be the best in the business right now. We're going to present you with the Miller Genuine Draft Pit Crew Award. Congratulations, Ray. Another terrific job and made even that much better by having to repair a damaged race car. You guys were awesome. Well, uh, again, you know, we really like to thank TNN and Miller Genuine Draft for these awards. It means a lot to the guys, but I'm, I can only accept this on behalf of them. I'm really lucky to be part of these teams. This guys are, these guys are making heroes out of me. We've got a great sponsor, owner, and driver, and things are just clicking. What, the other day when we crashed, we said, you know, it's going to show us what we're made of, what we do on Sunday, not, we did, not what we did today. So it shows what this, you know, group of guys is made out of. And, uh, you know, I'm just so proud to be part of it. I just, I can't tell you. And I want to say hi to Rick. He's home watching us. And uh, I told you we were going to have a good day last night, boss. And uh, we had a pretty good day. Well, uh, one more question. Now, you were a former driver. A lot of people may not know that. Ray used to drive modified cars. And he's been in a car. He knows what it's like. He's one of the coolest, calmest individuals I know. And I, I asked Jeff this question. You talk to him constantly to try to keep him calm down, keep him focused on what he's doing. Yeah, you see, because I, I made all the mistakes, so I know what they are, and I don't want him to make them. So I just, I just keep trying to tell him not to do what I did when I was driving. Well, I tell you what, this man doesn't make very many mistakes today. Absolutely one of the best in the business. Congratulations to Ray Everham and the DuPont, entire DuPont Chevrolet team. Great job. Fifth win of the season for Jeff Gordon, Ray Evernham, and that Hendrick Motorsports team. Who led the most laps, got the five bonus points. We'll tell you when we come back to New Hampshire International Speedway after this. Tune in tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern for Win, hosted by Rusty Wallace. This week, Rusty takes you to Saturday night, small town tracks. They may be small, but the enthusiasm and the excitement's overwhelming. Tune in to Win for all the action at 6. Well, the fans filing out to hop in their cars and drivers, owners, and other folks uh, hopping into the helicopters to get a lift out of here and back to Concord and, and off uh, for the trip home. You know, Mike, every time I see Ray Everingham, I remember one year ago when they won the uh, Coca-Cola 600 in Charlotte for their first win, Ray Everingham was catching more heat. A lot of people were writing stuff like he'll never make a real crew chief in the <laughs> Winston Cup races. What a difference a year makes. Now everybody celebrates the name. Well, he was a modified driver and a good one on the tour, but I think a lot of this type of savvy came from working for Jay Signori uh, as the uh, shop foreman and later crew chief for the International Race of Champions. He got to work with some great drivers, some really top-notch mechanic and, and uh, top-flight equipment, and uh, certainly learned his trade, and it served him well. As far as leading the most laps, Sterling Marlin led 124 today. Jeff Gordon led two more than that and I, got I the five bonus points. I don't think it was Sterling Marlin. Mark Martin. Yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. Penman, Penman, the Penmanship Award does not go to Greg Field. <laughs> Mark Martin, you're right. So uh, Gordon got the five-point bonus for leading the most laps uh, today. 
you know, Ray Everham was uh, talking to me the other day, and uh, he said, man, how many trucks you got? And I said, ah, you know, we got four of them, I think. Mm -hmm. And he says, you know, Flemington was one of the places I used to run at all the time. He says, man, I, maybe I could drive your truck over there. That's right. And, he's, and, I, and he goes, you know what? He says, if I drive it, I can fix it. <laughs> no, if he drives it, he has to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> Ernie, I do believe you have a Ford truck, and I do not believe Everingham will be working with you. Oh, de he, put details, details, <laughs> details. <laughs> details. <laughs> Minor stuff. <laughs> Oh. Randy Pemberton's caught up with the fourth place finisher today. Well, Terry Labonte's been uh, granting some interviews. Terry, heck of a run. Wasn't a win. The kid's tough and the car's good. Well, we had a great runner. Kellogg Chevrolet ran good all day. And uh, we were a little bit better earlier in the race. And it uh, seemed like the track got some more rubber on it there. And uh, I just could never really find the right line at the end of the race. And then we pitted and just got, got right side tires. And, and uh, I wasn't quite as good. My car got a little bit tight in the center of the corner. But it's still a great run for us. I got to congratulate Jeff, my teammate, uh, first and fourth. That's not bad. How much of an inner rivalry has this become now with uh, you guys? I, I know you're all good friends. You do a lot of testing, you exchange information, but he's, he's starting to win some races on you guys. I'll tell you what, he's awful tough, and they've got really a, a, a good deal going there, and uh, they've been tough every every week, and uh, I'm happy for them. Uh, you know, if, uh, if we can't win the championship, I hope they do. Okay, congratulations on a good run. Guy that didn't have such a good day today, but uh, came out okay, he's with Glenn Jarrett. What? Not a bad day for Rusty Wallace. First of all, I'm amazed this guy just crawled out of a race car. He looks like he walked out of a department store. <laughs> but uh, good run. You just got caught back in traffic after that uh, little cave-in on the fender there and never could get back to the front. And that was about it. I worked from 20th up to the lead there at one time, and the car was just awesome all day long. It handled perfect. The motor ran great. Everything was just flawless. The pit stops were good. But uh, I got an outside of Earnhardt there trying to get to, I was leading the race. He tried to get underneath me. I slid up, and they started freight training me, and Ricky Rudd got in the side of me and I tore the fender about left, off the left front. He probably didn't mean it, just contact. But we had to come in because the tire was rubbing on, on the fender. We cleared it out of the way, got going again. And then right there at the very end, I was, I was running second. You know, I, I got right up to him, was going to get him. Uh, probably wasn't going to be able to pass the 24, but we talked about putting two tires on. We decided to go for four, and that's what got us. It's, uh, it was the right call. But the tires were just a little bit mismatched, and it didn't work out, and we got a six out of it. But everybody did a great job. Robin did a super job today, and it was just a wonderful day for us, except we finished six. Well, I talked to Robin a little bit this morning, Rusty, and you guys have got to be really heartened by the way you've been running on the racetrack. You had some problems for a while now, but the car has been competitive week after week after week lately. Well, everybody keeps saying, Letty, what's wrong with Rusty? Because, you know, we haven't won four or five races like we normally do at this time, and we're six in the points. But uh, I told him, I said, just stay tuned, because our second half's really going to be strong. Uh, we've had a lot of controversy. The, you know, we're still having a problem with these cars uh, with mismatch when it comes to equalness on the Monte Carlo and the Chevrolet, and we're still messing around with weird things like these sway bars and all that. But I think they're going to come to their senses and finally get that thing off. But uh, uh, great race today. I'd like to say to everybody, say hello to everybody who's down at the Bahamas watching and uh, at home watching. It was a great day. Congratulations again to Rusty Wallace on a good run. Now Randy's standing by with Mark Martin. Well, Mark, the Unical bonus still stands, unfortunately, but you had a pretty fair day. Real good run for the Valvoline Cummins team. Uh, that was about all we could muster. We were real good the first half, but as the sealer wore off the racetrack, uh, the setup kind of changed, and our car uh, started getting a little bit tight, and there wasn't anything I could really do to it. We tried to do some things, and we just couldn't get it spectacular in the second half, so uh, we'll settle for third today. Okay, look ahead to next week. Uh, where's that, Pocono? <laughs> That's right. We'll be uh, looking good at Pocono. We always run good there. So we're looking forward to it. Our team is really performing at a, you know, at a top level. It's awesome. Okay. Congratulations on another good run. Upstairs? Thanks, Randy. Here's a look at the Winston Cup point standings. Jeff Gordon vaults into the point lead by 40 points over Sterling Marlin. Dale Earnhardt has dropped to third. Ted Musgrave, fourth. Or third is where Earnhardt started today, but he has dropped to 92 points behind Gordon. Ted Musgrave holds on to fourth, but he's just three points ahead of Mark Martin. He was 31 points ahead of Mark coming into today. Six through ten. Terry Labonte in sixth drops Rusty Wallace to seventh. Morgan Shepard climbs from tenth to eighth. Michael Waltrip in a tie for eighth. And now tenth, Bobby Labonte. He was ninth this morning. Back in eleventh would be Kenny Schrader. Ricky Rudd moves up to 12th, drops Bobby Hamilton to 13th. Derek Colt moves up to 14th, swaps spots with Bill Elliott. 16th will be Dale Jarrett. 
17th, Steve Grissom. Darrell Waltrip moves up to 18th, displacing Jeff Bodine. And Brett Bodine edges John Andretti out of the top 20. That's at the halfway point in the season. 16 out of 31 races. And we'll be back to New Hampshire International Speedway after this. Well, welcome back to the beautiful New Hampshire International Speedway. Thanks for staying with us as we continue our post-race interviews. And one of the guys I certainly wanted to talk to was Derek Cope. Had a great run today, and he always seems to run well here. He's really taken to this place. He won a bush race here last year, and uh, sometimes you get a handle on a place and you just won't let go. Well, that's true. You know, I got, I got to give credit to Jimmy and the guys. You know, we only got four laps of practice uh, yesterday, and uh, they made some choices in the car. You know, we had the straight arrow hill south forward running really well and put it in a position to, to be up front. Well, Derek, things started off real well for you earlier on this year. Then you hit kind of a slump, but it looks like now maybe you've turned the corner again. Looks like the team a little more competitive. Well, again, like I said, Jimmy, they've worked real hard, you know, looking at the points in the cars and trying to find problems to alleviate them. And, you know, the cars are starting to drive a lot better. And, uh, you know, we're trying a few new things, too, and they're starting to work. So uh, maybe you'll start to see us up front here a little more. I want to ask you a question. Uh, we were monitoring the radio conversation uh, between Tony Glover and Sterling Marley when you guys were having that great race for seventh place. And uh, I know they were sending their spotter over to, you, to your spotter to ask you to, to give them a little break there. But uh, that's kind of hard to do in the racetrack, isn't it? Well, it's awful tough. You know, I was pushing a little bit, but I could get in the corner a little better than he could. You know, and I was trying to smooth, be smooth, and uh, he's getting me off a little bit off of two. And I just thought if I could smooth out, I could put a little ground between them and run my line again. He was forcing me in a line I didn't want. When I got a little breathing room, I could start to put a little, you know, a little, little ground between us. But uh, it was a good battle. I had a lot of fun with him. Well, it was fun for us to watch. You want to put you on the spot here a little bit uh, this is your first top 10 finish since Darlington like I said you had a little bit of a of a dry spell there uh, this is going to pump the team up because you were competitive but uh, how tough is it to uh, to have a big fast start like you did a real real competitive start then have things dwindle away is it hard to keep the guys enthused well I think typically you would probably have that problem but you know I've been very fortunate here and that's why I'm gonna be here for a while these guys respect me and and I respect them and they stayed they stayed within themselves and I you know I stay within myself and we collectively worked harder at the shop, and uh, I think you're starting to see it's proven some dividends for us. Oh, absolutely, and I think Derek Cope has really learned a lot uh, as a driver in the past year or so. He's won some races, but uh, in the last year, I've seen him become a really smart race driver. I think a real bright future for this young man. Wish, the, wish this team the best. Let's go to Randy with Ted Musgrave. That's right, Ted, Mr. Consistency Musgrave. Another solid run, an eighth today. Boy, you've had a lot of top ten finishes. Yeah, I think we just learned that it was like the, that's ten times that Family Channel car has been in top ten in the last 16 races. So. You know, it, it just takes a little time. This is my second year here at Roush and the second year with the, the sponsor. And, you know, like I say, it just on and on and on. We get better and better. And we just didn't have the top-notch car. But track position meant so much today that if we could have had our car maybe in the top five on a restart, we could have held it. But, uh, you know, worked my way through. And the guys in the crew, you know, got me a lot of positions in the pits. It just was so hard to get up there. And we missed out. Another top ten for the Family Channel car, so I'm happy. What did you learn? What could you do to that car to make it run like the 24 car possibly did today? Well, I think we'd have to change a lot of things. You know, we probably couldn't put this on the air anyway. And Ford would get mad at me and everybody else. But, you know, we just got to keep working hard, you know. Uh, they ran really good. They ran strong. They got a good program. But we just need, you know, if you look at the advancement, my program here has made in one year. If I could just keep doing that and next year improve again, we'll be just as tough, I believe. And I understand you're not done driving today. You're going to drive home from here. Yeah, I, I was going to fly home with Mark and his jet, but you know me, I'm an avid uh, collector of old cars. I just bought an old 59 Ford T-Bird, and I'm going to drive it home from here. Unbelievable. Mike? Well, if you see him going down the interstate, wave to Ted Musgrave in that Thunderbird <laughs> convertible. Uh, five straight top ten finishes for Musgrave. Great run for him today. Here's the final. Jeff Gordon for Chevrolet in victory lane. Morgan Shepard, best finish of the year. Mark Martin, the full sitter. Terry Labonte. Comes home strong. Ricky Rudd, the defending champion, fifth. Rusty Wallace, Derek Cope, Ted Musgrave in eighth. Sterling Marlin, Ken Schrader wound up with a top ten. Rick Mast in 11th. Jimmy Spencer in 12th. 13th, Robert Presley. 14th, Michael Waltrip. 15th was Bobby Labonte, one lap down. 16th, Bobby Hamilton. 17th was Darrell Waltrip. In 18th, Bill Elliott. 19th, Joe Nemechek. And 20th was Bobby Hillen. 21st, Brett Bodine. 22nd, two laps down, Dale Earnhardt. 23rd, Elton Sawyer. 24th, Lake Speed. 25th was Jeff Burton. 26th, another lap down, Jeremy Mayfield. Then Hutt Strickland, Steve Grissom, Dave Marcus, and Dale Jarrett. After that first lap incident, dropping to 30th. Ricky Craven, Mike Wallace, John Andretti, Dick Trickle, Jeff Bodine behind the wall at the finish, as were Todd Bodine, Kyle Petty, Rich Bickle, 
Ward Burton and Chuck Bound. Finally, Jimmy Hensley was the first car out of the race. We'll be back with more from New Hampshire International Speedway live on TNN right after this message. Join Rick Benjamin tonight for race day live at 7.30 Eastern Time here on TNN Motorsports with all the news from the world of racing. Tonight victory of the season for Hendrick Engines. What an enviable record they have. But a young freshman driver who's had a lot of laps on this track had a good run here today. Glenn? Well, he certainly did, Mike, and I'm pretty sure that this uh, puts him in the lead for the Rookie of the Year standings right now. Good run for Robert Presley. Started out a little better than, uh, than maybe what it finished, but still, overall, not a bad day. Yeah, it is a good day. You know, we got to run up front there a little bit, and uh, just our pit stops are off a little bit, you know. We've got to learn to do a little bit. I, you know, it's me coming in and me going out and then while we're sitting there, but I really got to thank the Skull Bandit team. We had a good race car, and Jerry and all them boys at the motor room, they put one heck of a motor in, so just thank God for a good, safe race today. Well, we talked about this earlier in the race at one time, Robert. I talked to your brother, Charlie, and you've got a lot of laps on this racetrack, a lot of experience here. That has to pay off. It paid off, you know, in the long run of the, you know, we could go like 80 laps, and they would really beat us bad for like 40 laps, and then we would uh, get to using some of the apron of the racetrack and dive and dime in the racetrack and start catching back up to the leaders. But, you know, we need to get a little better fuel mileage where we don't have fit for no tires or gas here. Well, as I said, he's in a close battle with Ricky Craven for Rookie of the Year. Now, this is his son, Coleman. Coleman's the boss, and the boss says it's time for them to leave, so we're going to go down to Randy. Well, Bobby Labonte talking to the coach, Joe Gibbs. Uh, we'll try and get a word with him. Bobby, we looked and saw early today you were running up front track position. Wow, did that show something when you had to go to the back of the field? Yeah, it really did. You know, I tell you, I, I didn't really think it was going to be that, uh, that hard to pass, but, uh, you know, it was. And, uh, you know, we just had one little problem there, got us back, and then we uh, got halfway up there and uh, got spun with Bodine. Uh, gee whiz, you know, and got back all the way back up 15th. So, hey, you know, it was that was a great day for the Interstate Batter Chevrolet. We weren't really what we wanted to be, but we had a good top five car, maybe top ten car, but we made the best out of something that we couldn't really take, couldn't really control and uh, uh, salvage something out of it. So we'll uh, go to the next race. Track's tough to set up for here. Did you learn anything that you can come back with if they leave the, the pavement the way it is? Uh, yeah, you know, really, uh, you know, I, I know it's uh, it's just hard to pass on. And, you know, there wasn't a two-groove racetrack. It was a groove. In the middle of the racetrack, you had to go up and, and dime in the corner. Most everybody did. So it was just hard to pass. But, uh, you know, we got a pretty decent setup. But, you know, track position today meant more than maybe the next race. Another flat track next week. Big one at Pocono. Can you win there? Well, I don't know. We're, we're definitely going to improve off of last time we were there. <laughs> Okay, okay. Congratulations on another solid run anyway, even though it wasn't where you want. Eh, that's the way it goes. Thanks a lot. It's Bobby Labonte. We'll mention that Jimmy Hensley was treated and released from the infield care center here. As, as we surmise, he just had the breath knocked out of him when he had that hard hit into the wall. In turn number one, Hensley is okay. A lot of dignitaries here in the Granite State. And earlier, Glenn Jarrett caught up with one national figure who was here for the show. Well, you know, one of the most recognizable faces here in the crowd today at New Hampshire, and a huge crowd it is, is that of Kansas Senator Robert Dole. Uh, you a big race fan, Senator? Well, more or less, I watch a lot of it on uh, television. I'm a big Richard Petty fan. He's from North Carolina. My wife's from North Carolina. He happened to be a good Republican. And uh, so I've sort of followed it, not as closely as I probably should, but uh, I remember 1976 was my first uh, introduction to racing. It was in, in South Carolina, Darlington. I was there representing the Ford Dole ticket. Uh, Jimmy Carter is there representing himself. On that day, he won. <laughs> well, now, I know that you have declared for the presidency, which uh, the primaries will start uh, in the not-too-distant future, but what about a running mate? Well, what about Richard Petty? Think he's available? Or Dale Earnhardt? Some, you know, there are a lot of good people around, but uh, I haven't made that decision yet. First, I've got to be uh, the winner in the GOP sweepstakes for the nomination. And we don't have quite as many entries as you have here today, but we've got about nine or ten, and the list is growing. Wish you the best of luck and uh, have fun here today at the races. Big crowd here, the New England primary, one of the first, and uh, he's not going to miss a chance to be in front of all these people. I'll tell you, silly season has started in Winston Cup racing, and that other silly season has started as well here in the Granite State where it traditionally kicks off. The hat dance is going on in Victory Lane. Change the hat, take a picture. Ray Evernham, crew chief for Jeff Gordon. 
Well, we profiled Ray and want to take you with a little look inside what his thoughts are here midpoint in this season. Despite the fact his team continues to linger close to the top in the point standings, Everham isn't looking to race for a championship this year. Our cars are not built for points racing. Our cars are built right now to win races. Our team's not ready. Our driver's not ready. Uh, that's just too much pressure. I mean, you wouldn't put uh, a, a fighter with a couple of fights in, in the ring with a champion. You know, I don't want to get in the ring with Dale Earnhardt yet. You know, he's still the champion. We've got, we're going to make mistakes. You know, we're, we're going to make mistakes like we did leading the Daytona 500, and you don't want that to crush a young team. You know, I just made a big mistake that cost us a bunch of points the other night at Charlotte. You know, the, we have to go through those things, learn how not to do them, and learn how to handle them as a group before you can become champions. The ups and downs of racing can be very harsh, but Ray's son, Ray J, now in remission from leukemia, has helped to keep those pressures in perspective. That is a major reality check. Every time I start thinking, oh boy, we should have put this, or, you know, gee, we lost that Martinsville race because we had a spring do this, or we did whatever, you know, you've got a reality check. When you come home and he's happy to see you, and you think to yourself, this is what's important. You know, everything else you can live with as long as he's okay. Helping his son Ray J has led Ray on a path to help others and keeps his competitive side in check with his charitable side. I don't think of myself as a guardian angel, but I can tell you that I do go out of my way to help people whenever I can because I know what it feels like to be dragging along the bottom and had just have that hand reach out and grab you and, and somebody help you because I've had my butt saved a couple times and that's the truth. When all this is said and done, you know, this, this pool table will be gone and these flags and these trophies and all that stuff is going to be gone. But, you know, I want to be able to leave the sport and have somebody say, hey, he was a good guy. That means more to me than anything. Welcome back to New Hampshire International Speedway. All those folks in line are for the helicopter shuttle out of here. And we would like to have interviewed defending Winston Cup champ Dale Earnhardt, but he was right at the head of the line and on the first chopper out after the cars rolled to a halt in the garage area, along with his wife and daughter. Meanwhile, Glenn and Randy are catching up on other stories in the garage area as Steve Warriner gets set to play. Track owner Bob Bear knows that there's a bit of a delay getting out of here with the uh, Route 106. Uh, it's three lanes south. And one thing they do here in New Hampshire for this track that I've never seen anywhere else, they have a four-lane interstate highway, Interstate 93, and they shut down all but one lane northbound so that they can have three lanes, two on one side of the median and one on the other going south to help get this traffic out of here as quickly as possible. I've never seen that anywhere else. They, uh, they really stand behind this racetrack and try to help Bob Bear out because he has done an awful lot for tourism in this area. Glenn? Well, Mike, I'm standing by with one of the brain trusts that's been behind the success of the Morgan McClure racing team that's put Sterling Marling so uh, far up in the points. He's had a great season up to now. This is Tony Glover. Now, we listened to a lot of the radio conversation as Tony was encouraging Sterling there as, as he was having that great battle with Derek Cope. Uh, if I didn't know better, I would ask him if he were a cheerleader when he were younger, but I know that he started working on race cars when he was about six weeks old. So. But, Tony, you do a lot of talking to Sterling. That really helps keep him calm, doesn't it? Well, I just try to keep him focused, you know, on... on uh on what we're trying to do in the race. You know, we're trying to, to get as far toward the front as we can, you know, gain as many points as we can. And, uh, you know, let's face it, he's out there by himself with no one to talk to. And, uh, you know, uh, myself and Jerry, our spotter, are really the only communication he has or the only people he has to talk to. So, uh, you know, we try to keep in contact with him and just make sure he don't do nothing wrong. And, uh, you know, when he does something good, just uh, boost him up. Well, I have talked to you about this very thing before, and, and we have both agreed that it's, that it's part of the success of both the race team and the uh, improvement in Sterling Marlin as a driver because of the communication between you two. You get along so well. I tell you, we do. You know, uh, he's a super neat guy. Me and him gets along great, and, uh, you know, he's doing one heck of a job driving our race car this year. Well, we had a, uh, an ambulance come through here. We don't know what's going on right now. But, uh, uh, Tony, again, we appreciate, uh, appreciate you letting us listen in on the conversation. Uh, congratulations on the first half you guys have had, and keep up the good work. Well, we're going to do our best. You know, we're just going to take them one, one at a time and, uh, you know, just try to keep working hard and, you know, see what happens at the end of the year. Well, I got a feeling they're going to be there, Mike. Glenn, I think you're right. Thanks. See, a lot of these folks have stayed for the Steve Warner concert that Bob Bear is putting on for 
the folks to let some of the traffic subside before everybody hauls on out of here. We had some great racing here yesterday. We were able to bring you much of it. The Auto Palace 150 for Bush Grand National North cars. But a long, long rain delay prevented us showing you the conclusion of that race or the modified 40-lap shootout. You will see it replayed on TNN a bit later on in this summer. Uh, check your TV listings. But, but uh, just for a little teaser, here's the last lap of the Bush Grand National North race. 47 is Kelly Moore, number 20. Trying to return home the conquering hero was Ricky Craven. Craven had just passed Moore one lap ago. The black car, that's Tommy Bowles, number 76. As you watch from Robbie Crouch's Don Ling Valvoline Pontiac. You see the track still a bit damp there, way down on the track apron as they run for the flag. Mike, it was close to every race yesterday. A few delays, but real good action all the way. Crowd's kind of gone because we had several rain showers, but they had a tremendous crowd before the rain started. Craven won it. Kelly Moore, the point leader, second. Tommy Bowles, third. Great run for the unsponsored driver out of Ellington, Connecticut. Robbie Crouch, fourth. Keith Lamell, fifth. The rookie, Denny Doyle. Great sixth place run. Last year's winner, Martin Truex, was second. Mike Stefanik, the former modified champ. And yes, that's Kenny Schrader there in ninth. And pole sitter Andy Santer in tenth. A race we've waited all year to see. The Modifieds of the Featherlight Tour. Boy, do they draft, do they run. Steven Park in the lead. Tony Hirschman second, Jan Leedy the pole sitter third, and there on the inside is Tim Connolly. See the 25 car there hung up on the outside. Even yesterday, that wasn't a great place to be caught. We had some great in-car views from Stephen Parks, number eight, Sunoco modified that drove to the win. There's Ricky Fuller in 77, coming home in fifth, edging Tommy Cravino. Mike Ewanitsko second, Bruce D'Alessandro eighth, second generation star Ed Flemke ninth, and the defending tour champion Wayne Anderson was 10th. Steve Park makes it two for two weeks. Two wins on the Featherlight Modified Tour. And you will see those races coming up on TNN as an encore presentation. Don't miss them. And we love you, New Hampshire. Yeah, we'll be right back. Today's exclusive coverage of the Slick 5300 on TNN has been brought to you by Buick and your local dealers. Remember Buick, the new symbol for quality in America. By Texaco, clean system three gasolines. Add more life to your car. Take it to the star. And by Cold Filtered Miller Genuine Draft, making the world a very cool place. The uh, you know, sound of that ambulance you heard in the garage area past Tony Glover was to uh, treat a member of Junior Johnson's uh, Lowe's Ford team, Ronnie Queen, uh, a little bit overcome by exhaustion, nothing serious, uh, but the ambulance dispatched as a precaution. Here's a look at Jeff Gordon's season so far. Five wins, that leads the league out of the 16 races, 11 top 10 finishes, and how about this? He has led all but one race. Incredible. Boy, they have it together this year. I tell you, you know, that team has really uh, come along, you know, I mean, in the last couple years, you know, you kept seeing it, but you didn't really know it was was happening, but I'm telling you, they really come this year prepared. Sears Point was the only race that he did not lead a lap. Steve Warner is tuning up to play here for the crowd that stuck around here at New Hampshire. I want to say hi to Tommy Ciccone, SCCA road racer who suffered second degree burns in a practice accident on Monday. He's at Providence Hospital recuperating. Say hi to him. and. Just a little bit of a comment, folks, about our in-car radios. We like to listen in, and we know in the heat of battle and competition, sometimes language gets a little strong. If you have a comment on whether or not we should eavesdrop, send it along to us at TNN Motorsports. We'd like to know what you think. Coming up, the Humminbird Fish Finder 500-kilometer race, Saturday, July 22nd from Talladega, Alabama. That circle of speed, favorite hangout of Buddy Baker. He knows where all the fish are there. That is home, folks. Yep. Be sure to tune in live Saturday, July 22nd for that one right here on TNN Motorsports. Ernie, pretty good competitive race. And I, boy, Jeff Gordon, when he pulled the trigger, everybody I, else was back in the mirror. I tell you, you know, Ray Abraham set that car up really good, but Jeff did a great job driving it. You know, it was, uh, we found out what Jeff Gordon's made of. You know, he started 20th. They made some good calls in the pits. They ended up winning the race. And a great run for Morgan Shepard, his best finish of the season, winding up in second. Once again, to recap, Mark Martin, third. Terry Labonte fourth, Ricky Rudd finished up fifth, 
Sixth was Rusty Wallace. Seventh, Derek Cope. Eighth, Ted Musgrave. Ninth was Sterling Marlin and tenth, Kenny Schrader. For Ernie Irvin and Buddy Baker, for Glenn Jarrett and Randy Pemberton on Pit Road, I'm Mike Joy, hoping you've enjoyed this presentation of the Slick 5300 from New Hampshire International Speedway, a place we always love to come back to. We'll see you soon again on another live telecast on TNN, the Nashville Network.